There were cheers, songs, and tears from coast to coast last Friday night. The United States hockey team had achieved what they had only dreamed of last summer. But now one more dream remains to be fulfilled. The gold medal. To achieve it, they must rise to the heights once more this morning against Finland. And you'll see every minute of it live from Lake Placid. Games. Brought to you by the makers of Minute Maid. Fresh tasting 100% pure Minute Maid orange juice is never going to change. That you can be sure of. Make sure, make it Minute Maid. By Chevrolet and chefs everywhere who welcome the 1980 Winter Olympics to the USA. And by Kellogg. Starting your mornings with Kellogg will help you say it's going to be a great day. Good morning. We're still very much alive here in Lake Placid. First of all, I'd like to thank you for getting up this, uh, this morning, particularly those of you on the West Coast where it is only 8 a.m., as we know. If you have really, whom you think might have forgotten about it or overslept, why don't you give them a quick call and tell them that this is the game. It's going to be live right now. You won't see it again. It's right now for the gold medal game for the United States team, if they win and only if they win. To put it in perspective just briefly, you must... Think back to this. Imagine that you had a very, very impossible dream. And somebody said, well, if you take the talent you have, if you work harder than you've ever worked before, and over a period of months and months, over many games in many countries and many places, just maybe that dream will come true. Well, the dream has come true, that to beat the Soviet Union. But now someone comes to you and says, I'm going to ask you one more thing. Get up early on a Sunday morning with the snowflakes falling in the Adirondacks. Get out to that arena and do it all over again one more time. If they beat Finland, the gold medal belongs to the United States. It's as simple as that. If they don't, there are all sorts of possibilities. Some of them we wouldn't even want to talk about yet. We're going to be going out there to Al Michaels and Ken Dryden for the game between the United States and Finland right after we take a break here high in the Adirondack Mountains of New York. Just one thrilling moment after all week long. It started last week, actually, the tie with Sweden, the win over Czechoslovakia, then through the preliminary round. The arena filling up again. It's shortly past 11 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Can the United States do it one more time? Al Michaels and Ken Dryden from the Olympic Center. The similarities are remarkable. Remember Squaw Valley? Everybody, of course, remembers the U.S.-Soviet game, the U.S. winning. But a lot of people forget the U.S. had to come back the next morning at 8 a.m. to beat Czechoslovakia to clinch the gold medal. Same basic case again here. Everybody will remember what happened tonight, but can the U.S. do it today against Finland? Ken, the Americans find themselves in a vastly different role today. Well, they do. Uh, all season long, and indeed all tournament long, they've played as underdogs, but today they're the favorite. And uh, when you play as an underdog, you can play with great freedom because you've got nothing to lose. But when you play as a, as a favorite, uh, you play with fear because you have a responsibility to win. And they're playing against a very good Finland team today, a team that started out the tournament rather slowly, losing to beating Japan only 6-3, to three, playing better uh, against Canada, very well against the Soviets, and have increasingly improved since that time. They're a good hockey team. Vice President Mondale, who was here to open up the Olympic Games a week ago Wednesday, is here. And we have a situation also, Ken, very similar to what happened after the Czechoslovakia game. Could the United States come back and defeat Norway on Saturday? They started out slowly. And again, did Herb Brooks bring everybody back to real life? Well, I think that when you're going for the gold, to real life. But the, uh, but the problem, here comes the U.S. team. Everybody rising is one now. has become, in deference to the Dallas Cowboys, truly America's team. The ceremonial 
exchanging of gifts between the team captains. Mike Ruzioni of the United States, Yuka Porvari of Finland. The Finns having tied Sweden in the other medal round game. As you take a look now at Jim Craig, the man who has played every minute of all six games and done a scintillating job so far. And here we go with a chant, which has become so familiar all week. USA, USA. Well, the other day we had a crowd that was a little bit afraid of the game, I think. Everybody was very tight, very concerned uh, in the game against the Soviets. And they really didn't loosen up until the third period when the U.S. team did. It appears as if this crowd doesn't have that problem today. They are ready. In goal for Finland today, they have two outstanding goaltenders, but they've elected to go with a man with the most experience. Well, Jorma Baltanen is their goaltender. He's 34 years old. He's played a lot of... Uh, for the Finland team, and as you mentioned, he is the most experienced, and he appears to have the best kind of rapport with his defense. There are the medal round standings. Keep in mind, a zillion possibilities. It would be like explaining Dick Fort, or the way Dick Button explained ordinals last night. We could go on and on, but as the situation begins to develop in that area, we will explain. Very simply, though, if the U.S. wins, that's it. Gold medal. The United States bench, Herb Brooks, Craig Patrick is assistant. The goaltenders, Craig and then, and here we go. The United States in blue, Finland in white. The gold medal at stake for the U.S. Mark Johnson, number 10, with a couple of goals against the Soviets on Friday. Taken away by Swarnemi and cleared into the American end. Ken Morrow, who's done a masterful job throughout the tournament, losing it in his own zone, but getting it back. Ken from Bowling Green. Mike Ramsey, up ahead to Davy Silk. Silk dumping the puck into the Finland end. Johnson going in after it. Centering pass out in front, but Silk couldn't get his stick on it and cleared all the way back. U.S. is looking for a good start. They have not had a good start in really any of the games that they've played. They've been very nervous. The Finns will likely fly from the beginning. They've got to have a good start. McClanahan centering pass taken away by Porvari. He's their captain, number 25, probably their best overall player. And the Finns are offside as they cross the blue line. So 50 seconds into the game, the United States and Finland, no score. And you mentioned Porvari. He is a critical player for the Finns. He scored two beautiful goals against the Soviets. Another goal against the Swedes the other night. Because he to uh, a left winger, Lepinen, Porvari will see double action for the Finns tonight. Steve Kristoff, number 11, over to Bill Baker. Baker losing it at the blue line. The linesman going down as they pin it against the boards for a face-off in 18.56 remaining in the first period. The United States, you can see there how they have come on in the second and third periods. Not only have they scored only six goals in the first period of the preceding six, they have given up eight. They could have given up a lot more. Jim Craig has been very strong in the initial periods in every game against, uh, except against West Germany. The puck in the finish end. Clear down along the boards, and Baker is back there at his own blue line. Over to Davy Christian. Of course, his dad is here, remembering 1960. Jack McCartan also looking on today. The goaltender, Beale's shot is wide. Baker. Along the boards up to Aruzioni, and Mike is able to call Kristoff. Had he gotten his stick on it, would have had a breakaway, but he couldn't. Shot coming in on Craig, an easy save for Jim as Ramsey starts out of his own end. Up ahead to Kristoff at the blue line. Kristoff skating into the Finland end and then losing the puck. Coach checked nicely by Koskinen. Koskalaki, his slap shot. Is deflected by Marl, and then Craig covers up for the faceoff. I think we're going to see a lot of that from Jim Craig, especially early in the game. He wants to be sure the team is composed. You know what I just got? A 1980 Chevrolet Caprice Classic. Beautiful. It's roomy, comfortable, downright elegant. Lots of new technology, too. Which is why no car this roomy beats Caprice's mileage estimates with its standard engine. Sure, it could have spent more, but why? This Caprice Classic's got it. Now I've got it. This Chevy's got it. Just come and get it. Get a brand new Chevrolet. Two and 
and a half minutes into the game. Finland in white, in control, are coming to you live as Pelton in skates in. Craig makes the save and covers up. First time that Jim has been tested today. And two and a half minutes in, no score. Well, Pelton was at a fairly bad angle, but uh, Craig came out nicely to block the angle. Here you can see him going wide. Craig is well positioned, makes the block on his chest, and falls on the rebound. The U.S. team is rather satisfied with this start. They haven't been overwhelming yet, but at the same time, they haven't shown the, the uh, this, they've shown in other games this early. The Americans controlling the faceoff. Baker up ahead to Rakota. Back into the finish end. Hapalainen, number six. Makitalo, 28. He's pressured by Rakota. Rakota centers, but only Hapalainen is there for the Finns. And back they come. Yari Kuri, number 17. Six days by Craig. David Christian up with the puck. Christian tied up, loose along the near boards as the United States tries to clear, but it's Yari Kuri keeping it in. And the slap shot off the pass on the deck as Baker comes back the other way. Up ahead, leading Wells too far, and the Finns clear the zone. Susie at center ice. Nice pass over to Kuri. Curry shot was deflected, and Craig able to make the save. It's a much more difficult save than it looked as it def deflected off Baker. Wells with a slap shot. Blocked out in front by Leitma, number 10. And Leitma clears it into the seats. So 16-33 now remaining in the first period. I think that one thing that we should say right at the beginning is that this game, while it means so much to the U.S. team, it means the same to Finland. Finland has never won a medal in the Olympics. They've come very close a couple of times, finishing in fourth place, losing on goal differential. And this is their best opportunity. And don't sell Finland short. We had a chance to see them in the Izvestia tournament in December in Moscow. They were the surprise of that tournament. Here, remember the other day, they came within five minutes of beating the Soviet Union. They actually led two to one when the Soviets scored three goals in less than a minute and a half to win the game four to two. Davy Silk. Tomorrow shot in from the point off the shoulder of the Finnish defenseman. As Silk scraps for it along the side. Back out it comes tomorrow. Kenny keeps it in over the blue line. Skating in backhander, and that's Valkanen's first save. Craig has already made five saves, and that's the first for Valkanen. Johnson keeping it in, centering, but Silk fans on the shot, and Ramsey's shot is deflected wide. The fans clearing to center right. Emma Linen shooting it in back of the goal. No score. 15-53 remaining in the first period. The United States, the gold medal with a win. If this game winds up in a tie, a lot of possibilities. If it looks like that's imminent, we'll get into it then. And the puck frozen against the boards for a faceoff. The referee today is Vladimir Schubert. He's from Czechoslovakia. The linesman, Gary Holland of Canada, Nico Tolman of Holland. Well, here's uh, Ken Morrow's backhand shot. First save by Valtanen. Valtanen is known to be a very dependable goalie. He uh, rarely has bad games, rarely has outstanding games, but is good and dependable. Valtanen, 33 years old. Aruzioni. But that's offside. The offside pass over two lines. And so the face off at the inception of the pass back in the American end. Mike Garuzioni out of Boston University. The captain of this team that has captured these fancy. Bill Baker with that tying goal against Sweden. And the win over the Czechs, the emotional victory. And then, of course, what more can you say about what happened Friday? Kristoff. Up ahead to Aruzioni and then his return pass taken away by Hoppalainen. But it's Baker who controls now at his own blue line for the Americans. Baker to Kristoff. Kristoff tries to split the defense. And the drop pass to Broughton to Aruzioni. He skates in the shot and a glove save. And I believe we've got a penalty coming up. We do. A penalty coming up on Finland. Here we see Kristoff breaking through. But it comes back to Aruzioni, who's checked, but he makes a, a shot and a good save by Valtanen. So the penalty, the number 21, Janu Koskinen. Two minutes for hooking. The Americans with a power play opportunity. The Americans have scored three power play goals in the six games thus far. The U.S. 0-1 in the preliminary round 
And then, of course, in the medal round, defeating the Soviet Union the other night. Mark Johnson on the faceoff against Kelsenin. McClanahan back to the point to Christian to Johnson back into McClanahan it's Johnson there in the corner brings it back out again 147 left in the penalty Johnson and centering pass swept aside by Ilaranta number nine then Johnson gets it out in front but Leitma is there and the Finns are able to clear Pelton in number 12 circling back as the Finns kill some time a minute and a half remaining in the penalty to Tuscany. The whistle there was for uh, the puck striking a high stick and then going to a member of your own team. Uh, the Finnish player hit it and it went over to Peltonen and thus the whistle and the faceoff. The U.S. moving the puck around very well inside the Finland zone. Earlier in this tournament, they were moving around the periphery very well, but they were not penetrating. They weren't moving, but on that particular occasion, they were threatening well. The chant again, the USA, USA, which has become literally part of this building. Johnson. And the Finns clearing again. So Finland effectively eradicating the first 50 seconds of the penalty. Again on the power. Christian in over the blue line. Christian, back of the net. Losing the puck there. Cleared out along the board and back into the United States end. Well, after an initial burst there, 20 or 30 seconds, the U.S. team has done very little for about the last 45. They only have 45 seconds to go now in this penalty. McClanahan, number 24. Johnson. In over the blue line, Mark sweeping in and couldn't get the shot away. It goes through the crease. Johnson keeping it in himself. Left shot, hit the side of the net. O'Callaghan, back to Harrington now. Harrington looking to center, it does to Johnson. A great kick save by Dalton and cleared back to Craig with 19 seconds now left in the penalty. U.S. team moving the puck around really well, particularly Mark Johnson. He didn't quite get a full stick on that shot and a good save by Belton. Harrington. Back to O'Callaghan. Four seconds left in the penalty. The slap shot deflected but wide. Then out in front, in the crease, but cleared by the Finns with the penalty. Koskinen back on the ice. Koskinen on the ice for Finland and the team skated equal strength. The Finns killing the penalty. The slap shot by Schneider. Held on to by Baltanen, and then Baltanen starting to get in it with Pavlich. We've had a lot of incidents of that nature throughout the tournament. But in the games the United States has played, nobody has received a match penalty for fighting. Now for an extra special winter event, the Owens Corner. Fiberglass save twice insulation sale. Number one, save on pink Owens Corning fiberglass insulation now. It's on sale. Number two, save on fuel bills from now on. Look for this banner at your participating dealer and buy Owens Corning fiberglass insulation on sale today. The United States and Finland, the United States and the gold medal, and the U.S. and blue controlling with 12.35 remaining in the first period. No score. Ken Morrow to Ramsey, the youngest player on the team. Mike, number five, he's just 19 years old. Kept in at the point by Wells, but a delayed offside call. I think both of us uh, were a little bit surprised that the Finnish team named Beltonen to start the game. Kivala, the other goaltender, has played extremely well in this tournament. And uh, he looked like the logical candidate to play, even though they've been going through a strict rotation, and this is a uh, chance. But uh, it would appear as if the Finnish coach uh, knows their team better than we do, because Valtanen is doing what they expected of him. No score with 12-24 remaining in the first period. So Arnemi up to Susi, number 29, Timo Susi. Taken away from him by Kristoff. Back it comes to Sharonin, number four. And then Susie clears it around the boards. Craig can't stop it. Comes back out toward the point and back to center ice. But Aruzioni losing it to Sharonin, then getting it back. Aruzioni.
Maloney. Good pass to Kristoff. Back it comes to Mike, and his shot is deflected high over the glass and into the third row. Well, with about eight minutes having been played, both goaltenders have made a few good saves. What impresses me up to this point with the U.S. team is that they've shown very little sign of nerves, which has plagued them in the early parts of other games and logically should plague them in a game like this. After the game on Friday night, knowing what this game means, uh, we all thought that they would come out with a very slow start. Instead, they've played quite well up till now. Neil Broughton on the faceoff. Slap shot is deflected in front. The Finns in control. Back to center ice to Corbari. He loses it there. And it's Broughton. Leaving it for Christian. Davey. Up ahead to Broughton and then taken away at center ice. Corvari, the captain, weak backhander. Jim Frey clearing to the side. Baker back of the net. Aruzioni and tied up for a faceoff. Eight minutes, 36 seconds have elapsed. The U.S. and Finland, no score. The Finns, they were upset in the very first game of this tournament, beaten by Poland. Came back to beat Japan, beat Canada, lost to the Soviets 4-2, blitzed Holland 10-3. And then in their opening medal game on Friday, the Finns and the Swedes played a 3-3 tie. One more game to come at 2.30 this afternoon, the Soviet Union taking on Sweden. You still see Porvari on the ice. Uh, they're playing him double shifts, and they're playing him back-to-back -back shifts, which is a bit unusual. I thought that if they would be playing him double shifts, they would at least give him a bit of a break in between. Corvari is number 25. Top of line and back of the net. Cleared along the boards, kept in by Litma. Easy shot to save by Craig. Ken Morrow, 23 years old. Kenzie, picked up at center ice. Up the line and takes it away, and this is Corvari skating it over the right wing. Taken out of the play, however, by Morrow. And Mark Johnson controls for the U.S. Cross ice pass is deflected. Back it comes, however, to Morrow. Up ahead to McClanahan, as the Americans have to set up again now. Ramsey circling back. The U.S. team in good control. They're not forcing plays. If they don't have anything, they come back. But Ligma able to save it, and then the slap shot from near the point by Corvari goes in to make it one to nothing, Finland was controlling, Litma was able to intercept the pass at the blue line, and it's manifested in a one to nothing score as the Finns take the lead. This is a long shot, but it was a tough shot because he shot it right off the fly and very hard into the top corner. So it's Finland one and the Americans nothing. Now that you've had a drink, oh, what a time to think. Wow, I could have had a V8. Snacking the whole day through, oh, what that does to you. Wow, I V8. V8 cocktail vegetable juice is a great-tasting, healthful blend that's naturally low in calories, only 35 a 6-ounce serving. But remember, the time to think of having a V8 is before you've had something else. Wow, I could have had a V8. Finland won. The United States, nothing. Ten minutes and ten seconds remaining in the first period. Remember the other night in the West Germany game, Jim Cray gave up two goals on long slap shots early. The U.S. trailed 2 nothing in that game and eventually won it 4-2. to two. And again, it was the long slap shot today by Corvari. It's Finland, the one to nothing advantage. Vila, number 13, shooting it in around the board. Christian is there to come up with it, and now it's Harrington controlling number 28 from Minnesota Duluth. He played there with Pavlich, number 16, and works on the same line with Pavlich here now. Bud Schneider is the third man on that line. Here comes Pavlich. Pavlich trying to get it over to the left side, taken away by the Finns, and we've got a whistle for an offside and a faceoff. Here's the uh, goal again, the shot into the top corner just over Jim Craig's shoulder. We'll see it again. He's moving over with the pass. The shot comes immediately and just beats him. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the first period. Finland ahead one to nothing. Litma clearing it the length of the ice. The icing call is waved off. And Ramsey has it back of the net. Rakota. 
trouble. Taken away at the blue line by Pelton in, but back it comes to Ramsey. To O'Callaghan now. Remember, O'Callaghan's 17 was hurt in the first several games. But he's taken his regular turn in the last three. And we've got icing here, so the face-off in the American end. Eight minutes and 55 seconds to play first period. It's Finland one and the U.S. nothing. No experience, no job. I could do that job, but who'd give me the chance? Navy, Air Force, Marines. We don't ask for experience. We give it. You won't read it in a book. You live it. Pick up service. Pick a challenge. Set yourself apart. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. What a great place. It's a great place. The Finns controlling at center ice now with eight minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first period. Finland leading one to nothing. Timo Susi long is wide. The Americans clear the zone. Saarinen, number four, shooting it back in. But Dave Christian is there to pick it up. Christian. He has six assists in the tournament thus far. Broughton can't control. Then Susi almost lost it back to Neal. In the corner, Aruzioni back out to the point to Christian. Long slap shot and the save by Boltonen. Not only the save by Boltonen, but uh, he caught it right on the blocker there, preventing any kind of a rebound. Jorma Boltonen in the net for the pin. Here's Christian's shot. He's waiting for everybody to get to the front of the net to provide something of a screen. And there's Boltonen juggling it and holding on. Eight minutes and ten seconds remaining in the first period. Savar so Niemi, number three. Morrow tries to keep it in. The American controlled again. Johnson, however, able to get it in front, but Savar so Niemi is there for the Finns. Up to Porvari, who scored the goal, number 25. Leinonen, skating in over the blue line. Then the slap shot off the pass, and Corvari fans on the shot from near the faceoff circle. The U.S. team found themselves all tied up on one side of the ice. Corvari wide open on the other side. Fortunately, the puck just bounced over his stick. The Americans coming back the other way now as Johnson loses it at center ice to Leninen, the 15. Leninen skating in, ridden out of the play by Ramsey nicely. McClanahan picking up the puck. Up ahead to Johnson. Mark leaves it for Davy Silk. Then Porvari able to clear, and we've got offside. The puck came out across the blue line, and then Ramsey skated in with it, face off at center ice. In the neutral zone, it's one to nothing, Finland, with seven minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first period. Mark Johnson, his dad, coaches the University of Wisconsin. Father, of course, was the head coach in 1976 at Innsbruck. He was the college player of the year at Wisconsin last season. Baltonen clearing it to the side. Vila, the center ice now to Kuskinen. Kuskinen, his shot is wide. And deflects off the glass into the seat. So six minutes and 49 seconds now remaining in the first period. But the U.S. team uh, has to keep in, but they're still Almost 47 minutes to go in the game. They're, they're down one nothing. They would have liked to have gotten that first goal, but there's still a long time to go, a long time before any kind of a panic should set in. We've had dramatics all week long. The U.S. seemingly falling behind in every game and then coming from behind. Again, the case today, one to nothing. Felix got it out in front, then the slap shot is deflected in front, and Jim Craig will pick it up. We'll have the face off. 6.33 to go, 1-0 Finland, back after this word from your local stick. Would you believe the real story behind the Amityville horror? That's incredible. Make it happy, make it warm, make each day a sing-along. Make it special, turn that music on, and when special things are happening, have Burger King along. From special from Burger King, keep the crunch going strong. Have Burger King along, make it hot, make it fresh, make it better, make it best. Make it special, make it Burger King. 
An energy message from Amoco. When money's tight, people have problems buying houses, saving money for the future, even financing a new car. One of the reasons money is in short supply these days is the dramatic increase in the amount of dollars our country sends overseas for oil. Amoco wants to do its part to help the economy by producing more oil in America. The money spent for American oil stays at home, and that's good for everyone. America runs better on American oil. A close-up report on unemployment tomorrow night at 6 on 7. Six minutes now left in the first period. Finland in white, the United States in blue. It's one to nothing Finland on a goal by Porvari at the nine and a half minute mark here in the first period. Ken Morrow. Back over to Mike Ramsey, the number one draft choice of the Buffalo Sabres. The losing it as he crosses the blue line. The Finns get it back to center ice and Ken Morrow to chase it down there. Leaves it for Aruzioni. Ramsey. The Finns take possession. Akulina clearing it along the boards, but the Americans keep it in. Kristoff can't get the shot away. Taken out of the play. Akulina losing it at center ice, and Ramsey back to get it now. Up ahead to Kristoff at his own blue line. He can't get by Yari Curry, who then sweeps it into the American end. With the last five minutes, the U.S. team has been really unable to uh, pick up the pace of the game or put on any kind of pressure in the Finland zone. Apolainen to Makitolo. This is Leitma, number 10. To Susi, off his skate, taken away by Bill Baker. Baker starts in over the blue line. Bill Baker into the corner. Centered out in front and went through the crease. Deflected. Past Bolton in. Curry for it in the corner. Leitma and Kristoff now. Leitma getting it over to Hoppelainen. Number six. Hoppelainen can't clear it. Barton! Then it's deflected in front. And a catch made by Bolton. And Bolton is able to glove it with a puck in the air to save it. Bolton was very sharp on that save. First of all, sprawling out to make the initial save and then keeping his eye on the puck. Here we see it again. Watch him slide to stop the deflection. Then he's able to watch it go up and over him and his glove up to grab it. So the Americans coming that close to tying the game. Herb Brooks pacing back of the American bench. The Finns lead one to nothing. 4-18 to play in the first period. Kristoff, number 11, you saw him on the bench. It's Mark Johnson on the faceoff. The line of Silk, Johnson, and McClanahan on the ice at the moment. Corvari. Saarinen up ahead. Apollinus. Corvari skating in. Ken Morrow back to get it. Morrow, who always seems to be in the right place at the right time. It's been that way through all seven games thus far. And Aranta clearing it back. Corvari then leaves it at center ice, and the Americans take control again. Ramsey at his own blue line. Finland won the United States nothing. Three minutes and 40 seconds to play in the first period. McClanahan can't control. Checked out of the play. Johnson pressured by Elaranta. Johnson along the board. It comes out to Silk. Returns it to McClanahan. The puck still loose. Silk comes up with it now. Silk around the boards to Johnson. Mark tied up by Saarinen. Comes loose with it. Nobody's out at the left point at the moment. So Johnson skating in the corner, trying to center it. Now out tomorrow, skating in the shot. And the save in front, cleared away by Baltimore. And back it comes to center ice. But before the game, I was manager of the Finland team, and he was wanting to avoid a game that's played along the boards. The North Americans handle the puck along the boards much better than the Europeans. And we saw an example of that there with the U.S. pressure. Silk, the slap shot, the save. And tied up by Baltimore with 2.42 remaining now in the first period. Walton now has 11 saves, and Craig with eight. Here comes the last scoring opportunity for the U.S. Dave Silk, a slap shot that almost finds its way through Veltonen's legs, but he squeezes it and covers up. Pavlich on the faceoff against Koskinen. Christian from the point. His shot deflected high into the corner. Schneider tied up there. 
Baker overskates the puck, and the fans are able to clear the zone. Top of line up ahead to Vila, number 13. Vila then shoots it into the American end. Craig leaving it back of the net. Christian to start up ice for the U.S. Harrington in over the blue line. And Harrington taken out of the play as Hoppelainen comes up with it for Finland, number six. Off the skate of Schneider. Vila now at center ice, taken away by Pavlich. Schneider then goes down. Crowd wants a penalty, they don't get it. Buzz ridden out of the play legally. Vila in over the blue line. The shot by Craig, wide. 150 remaining in the first period. Schneider taken out of the blue line with the Americans with center right. Pavlich and Koskalati. Koskinen trying to tie it up along the board. But the Americans get it free. Then Ramsey goes down but gets the puck into the finish end. Kristoff skating in hard. And tied up along the boards with a minute and 28 seconds remaining now in the first period. It's Finland one and the United States nothing. your chance to get together with Charlie to cheer on all of America's talented Olympic contenders. Let's go, America! Charlie Fragrance, America's Choice. 128 remaining in the first period. The face off in the finish end, and it comes back out to center ice for Ramsey. Tomorrow. Alternate, stopping it back of the net. And up along the boards to Pelton. It clears to the neutral zone. Ramsey has it. Peruzioni. And back to Ramsey with a minute eight to go in the period. Remember the other night when Mark Johnson scored with one second left against the Soviets. Here's Kristoff skating in, but offside. Here's Kristoff. It's been having some problems uh, in the tournament so far, but he's gotten off to a very good start in this game. He's had a couple of good scoring opportunities, made a lot of good plays. Kristoff has scored only one goal, but as Ken says, and again, we reiterate, a total team one star. You can't say any one man has gotten the U.S. to this point. It's been Craig and Schneider and Pavlich and Johnson and Morrow. You can name them all. Final minute of play in the first period. Finland ahead, one to nothing. Davy Christian circles back. Bill Baker. Return to Christian. Up ahead, and then Susie takes over for Finland, number 29. Into the American zone, Johnson up ahead to Silk. 33 seconds to go in the period. Dave Silk can't get the slap shot away. Skates with it into the corner. Into McClanahan. Now to Christian, the shot, glove saved by Bolton in with 24 seconds to go in the first period. Dave Christian had to let that shot go quickly because he was about to be checked. But unfortunately, the U.S. could not get anybody in front of the net, and all it made it was a 60-foot, fairly easy, unobstructed shot. Finland leading one to nothing. The goal at the knee mark by Yuka Porvari. The Finns coming into this game with one point in the medal round. The U.S. with three points. Hapalainen goes down back of his own net. Litma there to pick up the puck. Cleared along the boards and stopped by the linesman at center ice. Aruzioni can't take over. Now the pass to Broughton taken away by Kimmelainen and the save by Craig who leaves it back to the netter as the first period expires. So again, the United States finding themselves on the short end of the score after the first period as they had many times throughout the tournament. Finland leading. One to nothing as we again take a look at the only score in the first period. Here comes the pass over to Porvari, and now watch Porvari. He'll let it go without even stopping it, and that's the terrific advantage. It makes it very hard for the goaltender. So at the end of the first period, Sky Center, it's Finland one, and the United States nothing. I don't know how I'm going to break the news to Charlie Wilson. He needs a whole new engine. $652 just for parts. Look, 
This is a Fram oil filter, about $6. If you look after your car right, including changing your oil and putting in a new Fram oil filter when you're supposed to, you may never have to face this kind of problem. But the choice is yours. You can pay me now or pay me later. You hear a lot these days about America falling behind in innovation, not coming up with enough new products and ideas. That sure isn't true of the tire business, where Goodyear is number one worldwide. We grew to be the world's largest tire and rubber company by being first with better products more often. And we weren't just lucky. We did it by investing in the future. And we're still doing it. We spent $1 billion on innovation and new equipment in the last four years alone. $1 billion that went into developing better products like Goodyear's Perform T Radial, into better testing facilities, and into the most advanced production technology in Goodyear history. All that adds up to extra value in every Goodyear product you buy. So when we're first, you come out ahead. Innovation. It's what keeps Goodyear out front and pulling away. I'm not sure I'm up to this kind of pressure before noon on a Sunday morning, but that's when the game is being played. It's all coming to you live from Lake Placid, the Winter Olympics. It's trailing Finland by one to nothing at the end of the first period. We're in intermission now. A good time, I think, to take a look backwards to 20 years ago, 1960 in Squaw Valley, the previous impossible dream, the miracle when the United States not only beat the Soviet Union, but then the next morning had to get up early and beat Czechoslovakia. On that occasion, they did it, and they won the gold medal. So let's look back to that through the eyes, principally, of goalie Jack McCartan. The piece done by Bud Greenspan. In the summer, Jack McCartan manages an ice cream shop in St. Paul, Minnesota. The rest of the year, he is a scout for the Vancouver Canucks of the National Hockey League. In 1960, Jack McCartan tried out as a goaltender for the United States Olympic hockey team. After a few weeks, he was cut from the squad. I had uh, tryouts in two uh, cities, one out in Boston for the Eastern kids and one in Minneapolis for the Midwest kids. And uh, we scrimmaged, I think, for about an hour one Saturday. And then after that scrimmage, the cut list was posted. And well, I wasn't on the, on the team. I was shocked, you know. And uh, it took me a while to, you know, to get over it, get used to it. Squaw Valley, 1960, the opening day ceremonies of the Winter Olympics. One of the men marching with the United States team, Jack McCartan. A few weeks after being cut from the squad, he is given another tryout. This time, he does not fail. He is named the number one goaltender on the United States team. Canada was a dominant team at that time. Uh, they were, they and the Russians were neck and neck, and the Czechs were right there, and the Swedes. So there's four teams that were rated better than the United States. I know I felt if we could win a medal that we'd be doing well. It is game four of the final round of the Squaw Valley Olympic Games. The United States in the blue shirts versus the Soviet Union. Incredibly, the United States is the only team to have won three straight games. Their third victory was a major upset when they defeated Canada two to one. Now in their fourth game, they meet the Soviet Union. The Soviets, wearing white shirts, were expected to battle for the gold medal. With five minutes left in the game, the score is tied at two. The United States has the puck in the Soviet zone. Bill Christian scores for the United States, his second goal of the game. The United States leads three to two. For the next four minutes, the Soviet Union continues its attack against McCartan in the nets. Again, as he did against Canada, McCartan makes save after insane save. With just a few seconds left in the game, the Soviet Union removes its goaltender. The United States wins its fourth straight game, the only team to be undefeated in the series. 
The next morning, the United States clinches the gold medal by defeating Czechoslovakia 9-4. With four upset victories, the United States has won the Olympic hockey gold medal. After it was over, the press was almost unanimous in saying that the man most responsible for the victory was Jack McCartan, the man who two months earlier was cut from the team. You know, you think about it a lot, and I know what won it for us. We, we were a well-conditioned team, but we were just a bunch of hockey players with average to good ability that played together as a team. I've always since, thought since that day that I'm a great believer in it, that teams win hockey, not individuals. Fine wind-blown snow coming down over Mirror Lake. It's Lake Placid, New York. We are live. So is the hockey. It's intermission between the first and second periods. If you've just joined us, the United States trails Finland to nothing. But we might set that in perspective for you, too, by pointing out that the United States trailed Sweden. They trailed Czechoslovakia. They trailed Norway. They trailed West Germany. They trailed the Soviet Union. And they now trail Finland. They have trailed in every game except the one against Romania. And they have yet to lose. Well, we went back to uh, see the hockey team of 1960. Now let's go back a shorter period of time to Friday night one more time and then some reaction to what that victory really meant. 28 seconds. The crowd going insane. Karlamov shooting it into the American end again. Morrow is back there. Now Johnson, 19 seconds. Johnson over to Ramsey. The Yelechinov gets checked by Ramsey. McClanahan is there. The puck is still loose. 11 seconds. You've got 10 seconds. The countdown going on right now. Morrow. Up to Silk. Five seconds left in the game. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Unbelievable. There it was, a scene I think you'll see repeated on our ABC sports pro programs many times as the years go by. The impossible victory. The United States defeating the Soviet Union, beating the greatest hockey team in the world. There was their reaction. What did it mean? Well, first, our expert. Past U.S. international teams have been put together very much at the last minute. And, and when you're playing against somebody who is better than you are, you can't afford to give up anything on, on teamwork uh, and on team feeling. Uh, this team has both of those things, and uh, I think that that's why they have succeeded as well as they have here. We've got something that they are. We play with more emotionalism, and that's definitely a factor in athletics. Uh, when we've got that and we've got the dedication that these kids have showed, I think we're coming to the point where we're proving and we're catching them. We're narrowing the gap. There was a tremendous gap over the last 10 years between the American college player and the Russian pro, and that's what they are essentially. And I think that that gap is narrowing because we've got a better product coming out of the colleges right now. And I'm really, really happy, Jim, that um, at day one, because it's going to allow some of the kids to, to feel that they can go to college now. You know, with this victory, it's going to give tremendous importance to hockey in the United States and also education, because uh, when, I, when I grew up, uh, going for the Olympics would be a, a demotion, you know? And, um, you know, it was difficult. I came to New York when I was only 20. I would have loved to, to, take, to have taken part in, a, in an Olympic series, but uh, now what I've seen last night was just a tremendous high, and, and, and none to say that the, the people behind them and the situation that exists, you know, in the present uh, situation really helped the, the team also. So it's decided we get a new compact copier. Next to third, personally, I'd like a copier with a document feed. Just a suggestion. Yes. Well, that's a very good suggestion. I'd sign off on that if it had digital touch control. What about contrast controls, a letter to legal ship lever, and computer diagnostics? Very good idea. Next time you have to please everyone, get a Xerox 3300. The compact copier with so many features, even a committee could love it. I thought if it's copied from Bound Volume. I was just going to say that. Gold medal winner, Don Scholander. More than most people, an athlete respects performance, in the pool or out. Take this cotton-rich natural blend shirt. Manhattan calls it 60% cotton for more comfort and with permanent press built in, so you don't have to iron it. Now that's performance. Comfortable.
Washable, durable, fashionable. Look for the seal of cotton. Cotton performs. It's still intermission time at the game between the United States and Finland. If the United States wins, remember they win the gold medal in hockey at the 13th Winter Olympic Games. But they trail at the moment by a score of one to nothing at the end of one period of play. I sure hope there's nobody this game later on today or tonight. Uh, as we said, if you got a friend who thinks that way, call him up because this is it. We're going to see it live. There's too much going on later today. Today of, well, not equal importance. It is of importance right now. However. Let's meet one of these players, the captain of the team, Mike Aruzzioni, second oldest man on the squad. He's a man who's played well, has scored goals and important ones. Let's meet him up close and personal. When the United States hockey team has taken the ice during the Winter Olympics, the traditional salute to the opposition has been led by their captain, Mike Aruzzioni of Massachusetts. One year ago, he was playing in the obscurity of the minor league, still retaining his amateur status, however, and to be chosen to captain this team was an unexpected honor. I was surprised, uh, you know, only because I think that, you know, there's everybody in this team is capable of being a captain. Uh, one person, uh, whether it be me, shouldn't really have that title. You know, I don't consider myself a real big captain. I, I, I more or less say that I, I'm a captain amongst captains. My leadership would show maybe on the ice. I, I feel I, I work hard when I play. I don't have as much talent as, as most of the players on this team. I don't skate as well. I don't shoot as well. I, I don't think I pass as well. But I always believe that if the puck went in the corner, I'd go in with the best player and still I'd get the puck. One of the, the big things that's helped me in hockey has been my family. Uh, I feel that you know, there's a lot of love and a lot of respect in that house that I live in. And uh, you know, it, it pulls you through the, the moments when you sort of question what you're doing. Well, we didn't expect him to go this far and uh, we're quite proud of him. And I think it's great. He worked quite hard. He was always the underdog as far as teams. He was always too small. He proved himself now. I work in two different places. I work in a storage plant in winter in the days, and at night I'm a bartender. And uh, they know my Michael. They, they sent me out here. They said, please, tell Michael to get the gold. That's all they want to know. Centapio's Cafe in East Boston. They love it. I can remember my father working uh, an eight-hour you know, eight shift in the morning, coming home and going to work at night, and then on Saturdays working on the side. So, you know, I think it makes the athlete, uh, especially in my case, appreciate it. Maybe what they work hard, maybe realize what people are doing, what my family's doing in order for me to go out and ice skate. I think what's helped this team has been our friendship. I think we've really pulled together. We've realized the odds that are against us. And uh, we have a lot of heart. We have a lot of pride in ourselves. I feel that's pulled us through a lot of tight games. And I think when we come out to the Olympics here, you know, people say, well, they may do well, they may not. But we knew we were going to get a medal somewhere. One of the reasons the American hockey team is in a position to win a gold medal is this electric moment in the third period of the game two nights ago against the Soviet Union as Mike Garuzzi scores the winning goal. It's a dream. You know, it's an American dream, I think, for an athlete to say that uh, he's had the God-given ability to be able to participate in something like this. Uh, a lot of athletes train and prepare themselves for it, but only a few get selected. And um, it's just uh, great for me and for my family to say that... Uh, I played in the 1980 Olympics team and hopefully won a gold medal. An ABC News special preview of the New Hampshire primary tonight. Peggy Fleming, the memory of a gold medal performance preserved in photographs. This year, Canon cameras will proudly photograph the 1980 Winter Games. When this year's athletes reach for the sky, Canon will be there to catch them. History happens just once and Cannon will be there to capture it. Cannon, so advanced it's the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. Cannon is the official 35 millimeter camera of the 1980 Winter Olympics. Save a gallon, save a gallon, save a gallon of gas a week. Every tire encounters friction as it rolls. The lower the tire pressure, the greater the friction. That cuts gasoline mileage. At Amico, fuel engineers found decreases in tire pressure during one month of normal driving can cost mileage. They suggest you'll get better mileage by keeping tires properly inflated. Amico wants to help you save gas. Save a gallon of gas a week. Action News with Dave Giles, weeknights at 5.30 on 7. Again now, as the second period gets ready to start at the Olympic Ice Center, Al
along with Ken Dryden. The only scoring in the first period came at the 9.20 mark. Yuka Porbari, number 25, scoring. There's the play with, uh, with Litma stealing the puck, passing it to Leinonen, and here comes Porvari letting the shot go immediately. one nothing, and that's the score at the moment. A look at Herb Brooks. Again, we will get into all of the possibilities that exist if the United States loses or if we have a tie situation, but we'll do that when it appears imminent because it is as complicated as ordinary, believe me. One to nothing, Finland on top in the second period. Ken Morrow to Ramsey. Up ahead and then taken away at center ice by Sawaran Emi. Leaning in, who had the assist on Porbari's goal, losing it tomorrow. Ken backhanding it, right side. Johnson skates in over the blue line. Mark tries to get it to McClanahan, but Robbie couldn't get his stick down on the puck. Ramsey scrapping in the corner. Along the boards to Johnson. Gets it back out to Ramsey. Right to the point, and to McClanahan. McClanahan had the angle cut off. And loses it. Porbari. Clearing to Hoppelainen. And now Morrow taking it away again. Up ahead to Johnson. And then shot back into the American end by Corvari. We'll have an icing call coming up here as soon as Ramsey touches it. And a minute one has elapsed in the second period. Take it up, Rizzo. Come on, Michael. Good job, Tony. The 13th Winter Olympic Games. Brought to you by the Bell System, keeping your communication system the best in the world. By Merrill Lynch, imagination, instinct, and versatility make Merrill Lynch a breed apart. By Condition Shampoo from Clairol, get it conditioned, it'll leave your hair physically fit. And by Stanley, makers of tools, hardware, draperyware, and garage door openers. Stanley helps you do things right. Olympic Ice Center with 1829 remaining in the second period. Finland leading the United States one to nothing. The icing call here. Here's play earlier in the period. Both teams are uh, are working very hard. There's a lot of stick work going out there. The stick there is knocked out of the U.S. player's hand. I think that if uh, well, the U.S. team obviously is not pleased being down one to nothing. They played pretty well in the first period. And it was really only the very good goaltending of Valtanen that has kept them uh, without a score. Earlier in earlier games, they were able to take advantage of rather weak goaltending from the Czechs and from the Soviets. And depending on very strong goaltending from Craig. Well, tonight so far, they're running into a hot goaltender, and that can be a problem. Zarn in with a puck number four. Akalinen defends deep in the American end and the centering pass. Nobody is there, but Hakulinen coming back with it and now Morrow takes it away. We're coming to you live. The game starting at about 11.08 this morning. Hakulinen keeping it in. Havlitz now. Over to Harrington. Harrington nearly fanning on the shot. Didn't get any wood on it. Harrington gets it back again away by Walton in but Pavlich has it Pavlich tied up Harrington again now to Pavlich Pavlich try to get it to Schneider out in front Schneider then gets a little bit on the shot but the goaltender Bolton and able to cover up again and now as things get a bit rougher we're going to get a penalty and Vladimir Schubert the Czechoslovakian referee you can hear him say USA Number five, Ramsey. Two minutes for roughing. That's the first penalty on the Americans today. The Finns with one penalty in the first period. The Americans unable to capitalize on that power play. The U.S. team has to keep their composure. They're losing it every so often. Again, there's a lot of time to go. Here's the action around the net. This is where this line of Schneider, Harrington, and Pavlich shines. And there's the problem with Ramsey in front of the net. He retaliated to a slash and got the roughing penalty. 
what we might watch for here with the Finns is that they tend to play on the power play much like a North American team. They will set up, they will try to use their defensemen shooting long from the point, go to the front of the net, look for rebounds, deflections, and try to screen, screen the goalie. Thus far in the first six games, the United States has given up three goals in shorthanded situations. Yari Curry with a puck. 17 minutes, 15 seconds remaining. We're in the second period. Finland on the power play now, leading one to nothing. Lehnanen skating in. Johnson able to clear it back to McClanahan, the American. And clearing the puck back down into the Finland end with a minute 36 remaining in the penalty. Lehnanen. 15, leaving it at the point now for Provari, who scored that first period goal, to Yari Kuri. Back out to Soranemi. Kuri again. To the point, Soranemi. The slap shot off the pass. McClanahan can't clear. Now Christian. And Christian able to get it back to center ice. A minute four left in Ramsey's penalty. Emmy shooting it in. Back of the net. Back this way. Out to the point. To Corvari. To Sawara Niemi. Back of Craig now. Baker got his stick on it to deflect it away. 40 seconds left in the penalty. The Americans clear the zone. As Johnson in over the finished blue line. Mark goes down. The Finns take it away with 31 seconds left in Ramsey's penalty. Lane in it. Bluffing the long slap shot, then clear the length of the ice again with 23, 22 seconds left in the penalty. Kept in the corner. Broughton. Pressuring Curry. 13 seconds now left in the penalty. The Finns having a tough time getting out of their own end. The crowd responding to the American effort in the shorthanded situation. Four seconds left in the penalty. Ramsey ready to come out of the box. Here he comes. The team's at equal stake. And a goal! getting a big lift from killing that penalty. Got the puck in front. It was a weak shot, but it appeared to hit a Finnish defender's stick and went right through Belton's legs. Here we see it again, still going wide. He's being checked rather closely. He can't do much with it, but you can just see it tip off the stick and through Belton's legs. Steve Kristoff scores. We're tied one. Before the athletes... <laughs> Before the spectators, Stanley Tools were at the Lake Placid Olympics helping its builders do things right. Do-it-yourselfers all over America count on those same Stanley Tools to do a job they'll be proud of. You can do it, America, Stanley. We want to help you do things right. Get a Lake Placid Olympic hat from Stanley for just $2 when you buy any of these specially tagged tools. Steve Kristoff scoring from the University of Minnesota, drafted by the North Stars. Another look now. Here he is again. Going to his back, and it was just tips very slightly off the finished defender's stick and is redirected straight through Valdeman's legs. The goal by Kristoff, unassisted, coming at 439. We have now 15 minutes remaining in the second period. Morrow trying to get it up ahead of Ricotta. Wells able to come up with a puck, but they're offside. The Americans offside, in over the blue line, ahead of the puck with 14.55. Left in the second period. Again, if you're joining us just now, we are live from Lake Placid, the Olympic Ice Center, the United States. It's as simple as this. With a win, they clinch the gold medal. With a tie, there are possibilities. We'll get into those later if it looks like a tie is imminent. But the Americans, after trailing 1-0 in the first period on a goal by Finland's Corvari, able to tie the game on Kristoff's goal here in the second period. Vila, his shot deflected into the seats. Al Michaels, along with former Montreal goaltender Ken Dryden at the Olympic Center, a place of rocking all week long. It all started with Sweden. The goal by Baker, the emotional win over Czechoslovakia. Then they went next door to the old arena last Saturday, beat Norway, came back here to beat Romania, West Germany. And what more can you say about Friday night? And now today, the Americans won, the Finns won. Baker. Pavlet losing it in his own blue line, but 
Baker is there to come up with the puck. Scrapping for it at center ice. And shot into the Finland end. Balconet. Snyder with a hard check. As Harrington gets the loose puck back out to the point. Slap shot in is deflected in front by Ilaranta. Now Pavlich controlling again. Out in front to Schneider. Buzz was alone but couldn't get his stick on the puck. And then Schneider loses his stick and he'll also be going off for two minutes here. So Schneider will go into the box. Fins have the power play again. 14 minutes to go. Second period. Sweet tag tools. These are the pictures you brought me yesterday oh, wow. of my grandchildren. I don't get to see them very often. Girls, you won't get to. I got a picture with Billy James. Ah! You didn't tell She's me she was taking a picture there. She's got a lampshade on her head, as usual. Like oh, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, good looking. How did you get a girl like that? This pretty face, right? Well, I'm so happy. The to get these good pictures. Shouldn't you trust your story to Kodak Film, America's storyteller? Well, Snyder in the penalty box going off two minutes for slashing. Here it is again. Watch Snyder. He makes the mistake of having a wind up here, but watch. He swings right around the Finland player. He never really slashes him, but given the fact that he had such a backswing, I'm sure that that's what the referee saw, and that's why the penalty. Brief po protest from Snyder, but his teammates moving him away from the referee into the penalty box. The Americans trying to kill another finished power play opportunity. Porvari. Johnson is with him at center ice. And back it comes across the blue line. Warren Emmy, number three. 140 remaining now in the penalty to Schneider. To Malinen. Back of the net. Back it comes toward the point and deflected in out in front by Nico Leinonen. So Finland, it took them 30 seconds after Snyder's penalty to go out in front again. It's two to one Finland. The U.S. ran into the same problem that they're suffering from through most of the Olympics. They're getting drawn away from the net. There should be a defenseman somewhere stationed in front of the net. And what Christian's on one side, Baker's on another, but Lehnenen is in between and it's a two to one game. Here we see Lehnenen all by himself, right by the clo post, the closest man being Mark Johnson. Lehnenen's sixth goal of the Olympics, two one Finland. Just got it, a Chevrolet Monte Carlo with a turbocharged V6. I looked at a Datsun A10 and a VW Scirocco. But you know, I got lots of darn good mileage. And on top of that, I also got turbocharging. More room, good mileage, turbocharged performance. No foreign car can give you that combination at a Chevrolet price. Monte Carlo's got it. Now we've got it. This Chevy's got it. Just come and get it. Ken Morrow has the puck for the United States. We have 13 minutes and 8 seconds remaining in the second period. Finland leading 2-1. to one. The icing call here in the face-off in the American zone. Crowd wanting the penalty call there on the Finns. Of course, Schneider went off with a slashing call, and the Finns able to capitalize in the second period. 2-1. to one. The U.S. team is... is has to keep its composure. They're, they're losing it every so often. It's showing up in some penalties. It's showing up in some uh, after whistle altercations. They're going to have to keep control of themselves. There's still a lot of time to go yet. Corvari can't clear it out. Now Pelton. So Arnemi losing it at the point. Here comes Broughton. Two on one. Broughton skating in. Broughton trying a centering pass. Nice play by Sarin in number four. Saarinen made a beautiful play there, forcing him wide and then diving for the pass. And now it's Broughton again, back in the net. Aruzioni trying to center it. Off the defenseman stick and back out it comes to the American end is Christian. Skating behind his own net. Defense keeping it in, Saarinen again at the point. Corvari now. Centering pass. And back out it comes across the blue line as Broughton takes over there. Broughton skating in. He can't get by Saarinen. Up ahead to Hakulinen and shot into the American end where Baker is back to get it for the American. Kristoff, who scored the goal to Broughton now. Broughton has it poke checked away by Ilaranta. Broughton comes up with a loose putt. Tries to backhand it in. 5,000 in. 
And the Finns clear the end to take the pressure off. Icing will be the call, so the Americans have the opportunity there to tie, but again it was Walton into the save and 11.46 remaining in the second period. That penalty to Schneider was, was a very costly one. Not only did it, it, it just slowed the whole, or changed the whole momentum of the, uh, of the game. There's the Broughton chance. He's almost able to jam it in the corner. But uh, the U.S. team was, uh, had just generated the kind of feeling that they want after tying the game, and they had to go back on the defensive again with being a man short. Wells and Curry on the faceoff. Ramsey has it to O'Callaghan. His shot to save by Baldwin. Burkota gets it back out to O'Callaghan at the point. Another slap shot is wide. Ramsey in the corner. The Finns take it away. Makikolo to Susi. The American possession. Wells to Burkota. And over the blue line, Phil tries to split the defense and can't, can't get the shot away. Rakota then tied up. Wells with a loose putt. Tried to get it back to Rakota, but taken away by Hoppelainen. Curry can't handle that pass. Strobel tries to backhand it in and can't. Now O'Callaghan again for the U.S. Over to Ramsey. And O'Callaghan again. Intercepted by Curry. Curry starts in over the blue line. Nice pass. Saved by Craig and swept away. O'Callaghan in control now. Up ahead to Strobel. Eric in alone over the blue line. Down the left side. Strobel setting up. Still nobody at the left point, so he has to pass it behind him. Now Baker is there at the point. And Baker's shot is deflected into the seats. The whistle to stop play. 10-29 remaining now in the second period. Still Finland 2 and the Americans 1. Bottlers of TAB would like to acknowledge all the athletes and their families for their commitment and their sacrifice on the long, hard road to the Winter Games. You are the best, and we salute you. We're just about at the halfway mark of the second period at the Olympic Ice Center. Finland ahead, two to one. The Americans into the finish end, but Harrington has it taken away there by Lehmann. Ferrari now with a puck number 25. His pass intercepted by Pavlich. And back into the Finland end. Elorata gets taken out of the play. Schneider has it now. Buzz. To Harrington. Strobel picking up the loose puck in the corner. The Americans trying to keep it in at the point, but the puck comes out past the blue line and tied up along the boards there for a face-off. Now with 9.47 remaining in the second period. There we see Harrington working hard. That line, again, that's basically how they make things work for themselves. They're not that talented individually, but they work very hard, they pressure very well, and they create scoring opportunities off that pressure. Johnson on the face-off, but the Finns have it. They are in the Emmy. Now Morrow. Over to Johnson. Ramsey now for the U.S. Rob McClanahan. McClanahan up ahead to jump, but Johnson has it taken away, then gets it back, and the Finns clear it again to center right. Ramsey to Johnson. Silk will play this pass off the boards and shoot it in. Back to the Finland goal to the near side. Johnson and Ramsey both there and the puck back to center ice and controlled by Finland. Koskinen skating in. Koskinen couldn't backhand it and went through the crease. And then back out to center ice. Koskolati, number 20. Craig leaves it for Ramsey. Up ahead now to Davy Silk. Mark Johnson. Good pass to McClanahan. Robbie skating in. Ramsey couldn't get a stick on it. Neither could Johnson. In the corner it comes now. Mark circling. So Arne Emmy putting a lot of pressure on. Number three. And a whistle. They tie it up for a faceoff. 8.34. The time remaining now in the second period. The Finns leading the Americans. Two to one.
best investments are often the hardest to find. You have to look and look. And no one else has our instinct to dig where there seems to be nothing and turn up valuable opportunities. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. Caruzioni, the American team captain. The Americans trailing two to one. Kristoff losing it on the weak pass. Corvari with it. Corvari, the slap shot. Craig with a save. The kick save by Jim. It winds up in the seat with 8.27 remaining now in the second period. Well, Corvari, an ever dangerous player. He's played an awful lot tonight. He's played every second shift. There's a shot. This time it's a low one, and Craig kicks it off his stick into the crowd. Be interesting to see how well Provari is going to be able to play in the lunches of the third period. He's seen a lot of ice time, and I'm sure that if the game is, is, is close, he probably won't be affected because of the emotion of it. If the U.S. team can get ahead and frustrate them a little bit, I'm sure the fatigue will set in. Kristoff skating in. Around the boards to Broughton now. Christian keeping it in at the point, but taken away. Haku Lyman. Cross ice pass intercepted by Baker and swept back to center right. Corvari goes down. Strapping for it. Back in the American zone. Now Neil Broughton, number nine. Broughton, who played at Minnesota. Second round draft choice of the Minnesota North Star. Corvari chasing it back in his own end. But back to Broughton. Broughton with Leitma now. Leitma, back of the net. Kakalainen. And the fence for ice. Keep in mind one thing. Again, we'll get into all of the ifs when they are imminent. But one thing, if the United States ties Finland today, we have the ultimate irony. We'll have Americans rooting for the Soviet Union against Sweden in the next game. If this game winds up in a tie and the Soviets win the next game, the Americans win the gold. Seven minutes remaining now in the second period. Strobel losing it at center ice. Susie has it taken away. Waiting for the Finns now to get back on side. Up ahead to Susie. Timo Susie flipping it into the corner. Ramsey passing along the boards back to Verkota. Verkota softly up to center ice. Where Saarinen is back to get it for Finland. Six and a half minutes now remaining in the second period. Finland leading two to one. Puri, his shot is wide. Matitolo passing it back of the boards to Tusi. Taken away by Morrow. The Americans back the other way now. Wells taken out of the play by Saarinen. Dakota over there to help out. Number 27. Now it's Wells again trying to Get it free. Strobel can't get his stick on the pass, and the Finns clear it, taking the pressure off. So icing is the call here. 5.53 now remaining in the second period. It is still Finland 2. United States 1 in Lake Placid. When our band's cooking, the music smokes. But not me, because like a lot of my friends, I use Skull smokeless tobacco. I just take a pinch of that good-tasting wintergreen-flavored Skull between my cheek and gum, and it gives me real tobacco pleasure without ever lighting up. So when you want something that smokes, listen to the Charlie Daniels Band. But when you want real tobacco enjoyment without smoking, try Skull. A pinch is all it takes. Thank you. We appreciate it. Back in the Finland end, it's Harrington for the U.S. Cleared into the seats again. With 5.36 remaining in the second period. Still 2-1. to one. Defends on top. Corvari scoring at 9.20 in the first period. Second period, Kristoff unassisted. The time of game. Then Lane and his goal off the finished power play at 6.30 of this period. 2-1 Finland. Five and a half minutes to go in the second. Bill Baker. Tablets can't control. Back into the American end. O'Callaghan. Baker. Pavlis strapping for it.
taken away. Leinonen has scored the goal, the second goal. That's the difference in the game. Leinonen's pass. And the line and couldn't get his stick on it. Back comes the U.S. with O'Callaghan. The Schneider, his shot to save. The rebound is cleared away. It's really about the only good scoring chance the U.S. has had all period with the exception of the goal they scored. Baker has it knocked down at center ice. And it's Lennon and skating in. Lennon and skating in on Craig. And Craig makes the save. Craig held the angle. Gave Lennon and very little. Here's Schneider now. Leaving it for Harrington. Harrington has it blocked in front. Top of line in. Back to Lehman in 15. Cleared out of his own. Harrington can't get it back in. And the Finns trying to tie it up along the board. And do 4 8 now remaining in the second period. Walton in. has a good job today. There's the chance by Schneider. Walton going down early, but making the save. Finland is going to get a penalty. Here comes the return play on the backhand by Leinonen. Craig just holds him. It appears as if Finland is going to get a penalty, probably for delay of game. That will be the call as the door to the penalty box is now open. You can see Suwarniemi trying to freeze the puck along the board. And that is the call. Here he comes. He goes into the penalty box. There's been tremendous inconsistency in the refereeing in calling that particular play. Here it is right here, Suwarni Amy. He's got the puck along the board. The U.S. players back off. And if they don't go into the delay of game, however, in many of the games up until this time, the referees have blown the whistle, uh, the whistle and have not called a penalty. Good remark in terms of the game the other night in particular when they called the penalty against the Soviet Union the type that they hadn't been calling and the Americans were able to capitalize you see if that can be the case again now as for the second time and for the first time since very early in the game the United States with a power play chance four minutes and six seconds remaining in the second period Finland ahead two to one Johnson in its center ice but Ramsey able to get it back to Mark now Dave Christian over to Ramsey. Up ahead to Silk. In on the left side. Silk. Back of the net to McClanahan. To Christian now at the point. Return pass to McClanahan. Center down in front. Silk shot to save. Still loose. And now it's tied up for a face off. Well, the referee feeling that the puck was being held. Blew the whistle. But a good play by the U.S. team. Working a two or three way pass. Here we see it at the corner of the net. Now watch the U.S. player at the top of the screen. Sneaking in at the side, but because he's a right-handed shot, he didn't have much of an opportunity to get his stick on the on the puck. 3:38 to go in the second period. Challenge: Show the world the 1980 Winter Olympics via a Bell system technology called light wave communications. Light wave beams information on pulses of laser light through hair-thin glass fibers. Today, this new light system stands ready to transmit the color pictures you see when you watch the 1980 Winter Olympics on TV. The Bell System, keeping your communication system the best in the world. Rob McClanahan with a puck to Davy Silk, 118 remaining now in the penalty. Ramsey to Silk again. McClanahan through the crease and cleared back into the American zone where Craig will leave it in his own blue line for Ramsey. The Finns were not only one man short, but they only had, uh, they had four players with only three sticks. It's in a line and then lost his stick. Can't keep it in at the point. Back it comes, they'll set up again. We have 54 seconds left in the penalties to Sawar and Emmy of Finland. The U.S. trying to get even on the power play. Johnson, centering pass is blocked in front. And cleared again back into the American zone with Craig. We'll leave it now for Ramsey again with 35 seconds left in the penalty. Davy Silk. O'Callaghan up ahead to Mark Johnson. Johnson skating into the Saren and doing a marvelous job for the Finns, number four, in killing this power play opportunity. Johnson. Back of the net now for Ruzioni. To Silk, 12 seconds left in the penalty. Silk, Aruzioni again. Back to Silk, six seconds left in the penalty. Silk to Johnson. 
Mark circling, and the penalty is expired. The teams are at equal strength now. Aruzioni dropping it for Silk. And behind the net, Johnson setting up. Back to Silk. To Aruzioni. The Americans controlling the puck, but not getting a real good scoring opportunity. They can't get anybody close to the net. The passes are too wide. And then clear the length of the ice. And with the teams at equal strength, this will be an icing call. So a minute 40 now remaining in the second period. 140 left in the second. Still Finland two and the Americans one. Your hair passed this physical fitness test. Does it spring? Does it swing? Does it shine? Then get into condition. Clairol's Condition Shampoo. Condition is protein enriched. It revives out of shape flabby hair so it can swing, spring, shine. Get into condition. It'll leave your hair physically fit. And after every shampoo, use Condition 2, Clairol's instant after shampoo treatment. We're live at the Olympic Ice Center. A minute, seconds left in the second period. Finland leading the U.S. 2-1. to one. The Finns in white, the Americans in blue. Lena in. Shooting it. Back of the net as Craig is there. And the Americans start back the other way now. Kristoff, who has scored the only American goal today. Kristoff skating in. Kristoff shot goes through the crease. Baker can't keep it in. Back it comes to center ice. Kostolati, number 20, leaving it for Kostinen. Kostinen sweeping and shooting in the glove save by Craig. Very big save by Jim Craig. With the U.S. team down by a goal with only a minute and eight seconds to go in the period, it would have created a two-goal gap. It's particularly tough because Craig had to be moving his body to the opposite side to where the puck was going. He made a beautiful glove save. Walton in with 19, Craig with 12. We talked about the similarity to Squaw Valley, the U.S. having to beat Czechoslovakia in the final game back in 1960. Remember in that game in which they did beat Czechoslovakia, they trailed 4-3 after the second turn, winning at 9-4. Blocked in front and covered up for the faceoff. So Ramsey in front of Craig to make the save. Finland has played an excellent period. They, in the first period, they had the lead, but they had it largely because of the goaltending of Belton. And in this period, there's been very little activity around the Finland zone. Only two or three chances, and really the, the goal that did result was one off the non-chance, but made into one by a deflection off the defenseman's stick. Spins ahead two to one. Has it poke checked away. Snyder now losing it at center ice to Leinonen, but it's Pavlich who comes up with the puck. Pavlich goes down. And the Finns clearing it again as Torbari, number 25, takes control. Back to Sawar and Iemi. Morrow will chase it down in the corner. Over to Ramsey with 25 seconds remaining in the second period. Up ahead to Schneider. Buzz fanning on the shot. Tries the backhand. Nobody there out in front. Kept in by Harrington. He's tied up. Puck comes loose. 10 seconds to play. And Pavlik shooting into the corner and nobody is there. Leaning in takes control. Five seconds to go in the second period. The puck cleared the length of the ice. We'll have an icing call if the touch is made before the end of the period, but it's not. So, at the end of the second period, in the game the United States needs to win to clinch the gold medal, it's Finland 2, the U.S. 1, and we'll be back after these words from your local station. You may have noticed uh, when we've had shots behind us of Main Street and the lake that there's nobody outdoors today. Not because it's early on Sunday morning, I think it's because we're live. Everybody is watching this hockey game either in the arena or television set side. United States, if you've just joined us by two to one, we're at intermission time between the second and third periods. And in just a minute, we're going to show you the second run of yesterday's competition in the four-man bobsled. However, we found out an interesting thing just before we go to the actual competition. We went to Gillis's Beauty Shop on Main Street in downtown Lake Placid and found out something you wouldn't expect, that some of the finickiest customers they have there are bobsledders. Got a lot of bobsledders. Bobsledders. Yeah. Certainly. Those are men. Yeah, men. Of course, we do men too. Well, that's right. Yeah, everybody has to look good. <laughs> what, what kind of bobsledder? A rough-looking style. 
Live again from the Olympic Ice Center, Al Michaels, Ken Dryden, 20 minutes to play. The third period beginning now. The United States trailing Finland 2-1. to one. The U.S. clinching the gold medal if from behind and win it. So our enemy into the American end. Back of the net. Defends on top. The difference right now, leaning in goal on the power play at 6.30 of the second period. Finland ahead 2-1. to one. 18 seconds elapsing now in the third. Finns have played a very impressive game up until now. They've, they've played it basically off of a defensive base, only going to the offense when there seems to be an opportunity. Much like the way they did against the Soviets a few nights ago, playing the game mostly in their zone, but rarely in trouble. Clearing the zone when they have to, getting good goaltending when they need it. We we'll start to point out the possibilities now. Even with a tie, the United States would have a chance at the gold medal with a tie in this game. It would mean that we would have, again, as I say, what would amount to an incredible irony. The Americans rooting for the Soviets against Sweden in the next game. To either beat the Swedes or tie the Swedes. The Americans would still then have a chance at a gold medal. Two to one, Finland on top. Christian losing it. It's Leitman now taking over at center ice. Eloranta. Back into the American end, Davy Christian, number 23. Christian's pass is too far, too long for Aruzioni. And when the touch is made here, the icing call and the faceoff near Jim Craig now in the U.S. zone. I would expect that the Finns would continue to play the same way, again, rather defensively, uh, and, and hope that given that style of play and given the circumstances and given the fact that the U.S. team is so close to something that they desperately want that they'll be able to cause great frustration in the U.S. team and make it that much harder for them to come back to tie the game and perhaps go ahead. The man in your picture on the finish bench was Kalevi Numanen, the head coach. Saarinen into the corner and Morrow taking the puck there for the United States but back out to the point where Saarinen keeps it in. Now Morrow again. Up ahead to Harrington. Snyder, Buzz in on the left side. Snyder to Pavlik. Pavlik tries to get it out in front. And it will be cleared by the Finns. Pelkinen stepped into the boards by Morrow. Taken by Ramsey. Snyder chasing it down in the corner now. To Harrington. Aquilina can't control. Now Snyder. Buzz couldn't get it out in front. Pavlich get on the blue line, so the Americans will try to set up again. Morrow has it taken away at center ice. It's Peltonen now, and over the blue line. Peltonen, ridden out by Ramsey. Leitma then shoots it into the corner. Out in front is Morrow. Ken, up ahead now to Pavlich. Pavlich, his pass too long for Snyder, and the Americans changing lines on the fly as Valpinen has the easy save here, and the Finns start to come back the other way. Leitma, losing it at center ice, Christian. Back to Bill Baker. And Baker, his pass too long into the finish zone, and the icing call to result in the face off in the American end now. With 17 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the game, it is still Finland 2 and the Americans 1. The Butlers of TAB would like to acknowledge all the athletes and their families for their commitment and their sacrifice on the long, hard road to the Winter Games. You are the best, and we salute you. We've got the greatest news of all for you. As you can see, the Americans, the mob team there, Phil Bracota, has just scored to tie the game. Phil Bracota scoring his third goal in the Olympics at the 2.25 mark. Here's the play with Christian starting it. Dave Christian makes a beautiful play. The defenders with him, passes to Bracota, who hits the far corner. Here we see it again. Watch the defenders all go on Christian. The quota is open, he gets Falcon and moving the wrong way, and it's a 2-2 two -two game. So the Americans, nothing has come easy. 
for the last week and a half the tie with Sweden in the last 27 seconds. The emotional game of Czechoslovakia. In fact, they trailed Norway. They trailed West Germany the other night against the Soviet Union. Now the game is tied again, 2-2. 17 and a half minutes to play. Craig stopping it back in the net. Ramsey. Up ahead to Johnson. Morrow picking up the loose puck. The Sens take over in their own zone. Darren in. Icing is waved off here. Morrow with Corbari, and it's tied up along the board. Take a look, another angle now on the goal by Verkota. On the pass from Christian. Game of 2 2. There's Christian again. Because he's forcing the play, he brings everybody with him. Leaving Verkota at a bad angle, but still all alone. Deja vu, it's incredible. It's Squaw Valley all over again. The U.S. trailed in that game in which they clinched the gold medal, remember, 4-3 against Czechoslovakia. Came back to win. We're tied 2-2 here. 16-56 remaining in the third period. Long swept aside by Craig. Castellati loses the puck to Kristoff. Steve back the other way. The crowd roaring. Kristoff in over the blue line. And then his drop pass is intercepted and cleared back to the American zone. Maybe Christian takes control there. Christian himself over the blue line. Karen's off the board. Zeruzioni out in front. Christoph couldn't get his stick on it. And Christian, the poke check, but Hoppe line in control for Finland. So on the enemy, back to get it. The U.S. is changing. They're getting caught a little bit. Now Vila, the slap shot. Swept aside and into the seat. The U.S. changing on the fly. And as Ken said, almost left the fence. Well, we've got another angle on the goal. Dave Christian taking the puck from his own zone. And then finding Verkota on the wing. There you see Verkota at a fairly bad angle. But Beltanen is well over to the post, leaving the far side. 16-11. The chance again, U.S.A. Pocket, a very catty on the bench today. 16 minutes remaining. Up ahead to hop the line, and his shot is deflected into the seats by Ramsey. How do you suppose that there's something in the Christian family genes about uh, Olympic finals and doing something in third period? Incredible, his father Billy, of course. As you look at Vice President Walter Mondale, his father Billy playing on the 1960 team, his uncle Rod on the 1960 team. There's a graphic showing that Craig in the third period in the six games has allowed a total of three goals. Craig thus far today, 14 saves. Balkanen has been equal to the task on 20 occasions. Litma losing it at center ice. Morrow sweeping it but losing it to Porvari. Cleared into the American end, the bouncing puck. Craig leaving it for Morrow. Morrow up ahead, a nice pass to Harrington. Skating in over the blue line, but taken away. Good play by Litma of Finland. To Eloranta. Eloranta. And deflecting it goes through the crease. Pelton and couldn't get his stick on it. Out in front, the Finn keeping the pressure on. Now Bud Schneider takes control for the U.S. Brings it out of danger to center ice. And passes it into the corner, bouncing in back of the net to leave it for Pelton in. 15 minutes to play. The U.S. 2 and Finland 2. Pelton in. Can't split the defense. Taken away by Mark Wells. Rakota chasing it down. And tied up for a faceoff. 14 minutes and 46 seconds remaining at the Olympic Center. U.S. 2, Finland 2. A big name doesn't mean a big price. Goodyear has been the best-selling tire for 65 years. And yet our tires probably cost a lot less than you'd expect to pay for such quality. Sure, our name is never out of sight but neither are our prices. Good year. The U.S. 3, Finland 2, McClanahan, his 15th 
last goal of the Olympics. The Americans have taken the lead for the first time today. Finland led 1-0, tied 1-1, and it was 2-1 Finland. And now the Americans have the lead. Ken Morrow to Silk. Morrow again. The announcement being made now to crowd responding. McClanahan's goal, assisted by Silk and Johnson. Out in front to McClanahan. His shot goes wide. Leapless scrapping for it along with Johnson. And tied up along the boards. You know something? If you had told Strip to Hollywood and gone into a producer's office, you'd have been thrown out on your ear. Completely. Here we see McClanahan again. Now watch Belton. And he goes down, leaves that opening. And McClanahan finds it. The United States hockey team on top, three to two. 13 minutes and 24 seconds remaining. Saranen. Vila. Broughton. With Vila and Broughton and hooked him from behind and we've got a penalty here. So the Fens will have a power play opportunity as Broughton will be going off for two minutes. And that's the kind of play that you want to avoid in this, in this game. Broughton was behind the play. Trying to stop the finish flare. But as is often the case when you're behind, you end up hooking and tripping rather than taking the extra step or two. We have 13 12 remaining. The USA 3 and Finland 2. A big green football team and endless yellow sea. A cherry pie and orange sky. The bluest eyes you'll ever see. Yes, America's true color. TV brings you America's colors vivid and lifelike, and our special BIR2 circuit adjusts the color automatically. Yes, America's true colors come through on GE. GE, we bring good things to you. Yes, America's true colors come through on GE. 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 Yes, America's true colors come through on a minute 29, a minute 28 now, left in the penalty to Brock, who is standing in the penalty box. Back it comes to center right. Corvari. Hakulainen. Nice drop pass. And then Hakulainen had his stick on it, but Craig makes the save again. Craig deflects it into the seat. So the fans twice. Coming within inches of tying the game as we see it again. The U.S. team got caught up ice. Here's the play in front. Baker blocks the pass originally, but is down and out of position. And the Finns have a chance to turn around and make the shot, but it's deflected up probably by Morrow's stick high into the seat. 12-26 remaining in the game. 1-14 remaining in the penalty to Broughton. The U.S. 3, Finland 2. The Johnson. McClanahan unit out there right now along with Ramsey and Morrow to try to kill the penalty. Leaning in on the face off for Finland. Out to the point. Curry. Into the corner now. Back to Curry at the point. Curry winds up. Slap shot and a stick save by Craig. Good save. Partially in. screened by McClanahan and a good kick save by Craig. Leaning in, gets it back to the corner. Now Front slap shot goes wide. 48 seconds left in the penalty. And they're they're trying to again. set up their points all the time. Morrow made the block there off the slap shot. Back into the Finland end. 40 seconds, 39 in the penalty remaining to Brock. Trying to block the U.S. team needs right now. Where it's defense forward to goalie. They got to get in front of the puck. Kim Alainen to Lainen in. Slap shot off the pass is wide. 27 seconds left in the penalty. Corey. Curry losing the puck. The American is own. 19 seconds left in the penalty. Johnson skating in slap shot. Club save. Covered up. And a face-off with 14 seconds now left in the penalty to Broughton. The crowd, they were chanting USA, then we want a goal. Now it's defense. Mark Johnson seeing he has a chance. Goes up with McClanahan and takes the shot. Fairly easy save by Baltimore. Face off in the Finland end. 
Herb Brooks. They're doing instructions. The teams will be at equal strength in 14 seconds. We have 11.26 remaining in the game. We're live at the Olympic Ice Center. Again, if you join us late, the U.S. with a win. Clinches the gold medal. With a tie, still a possibility. Depending on the outcome of the Soviet game. And they'll bring in Peruzioni now on the faceoff as the linesman expels the original pair. Ruzzi only controls the faceoff, but then it comes back out over the blue line. Baker to Christian. Eight seconds left in the penalty. Christian tries to clear it down the ice. Now finally does with four seconds. Three. Now two. One. And the teams are at equal strength as Broughton comes out of the penalty box. Castellani skates by Broughton. Now we've got another penalty coming up on Christian. So the Americans successfully killing the power play opportunity. will have to do it again. Try to do it again now. Herb Brooks expressing the emotions of everyone right about now. Well, I'm sure uh, I'm sure referee Schubert at this stage is trying to avoid calling penalties. That was a pretty obvious tripping call. He could do nothing other than call the penalty. He's in a position now where he doesn't want to decide the game, but if the teams are going to take the obvious penalty, he's going to have to call them. Dave Christian going off for two minutes. 11.06 remaining in the game. Right, got to do it. Got the United States on top. 3-2. Broughton on the faceoff. Broughton trying to get it out over the blue line and now cleared back into the Finland end. Valtanen is there to stop it and leave it for Sawar and the end. Of his own net. To Warren Emmy. In over the blue line. Trying to get it over to Povari. And cleared by the Americans. A minute 30 by Randall. Here comes Christoph. Christoph trying to get it back to Broughton and couldn't. Loose puck in the Finland end. Taken now by Curry. To Pelton in. A minute 24 left in the penalty. Curry at the point. Broughton strapping for it, losing it there. Hakalina now starts to skate in, leaves it for Pelton in. One ten to go on the penalty. Out in front, slap shot by Porbari. Knocked down in front, covered by Craig. A minute five to go on the penalty. U.S. doing a good job so far. The Finns having a hard time setting up the way they want to. But again, what they're going to be looking for is getting the puck back to Curry on one side and uh, get it to the other defense as well. Four shots on, uh, on goal. The U.S. unit at the Avalanche with O'Callaghan, Snyder, and Baker. So Warren Emmy, number three, Corey, return pass. Corbari now. 55 seconds left in the penalty. Forty-five seconds remaining now in the penalty. Out in front, Peltonen got tied up by Snyder. Baker tries to clear. Baker able to get it. 35 seconds remaining now in the penalty. This is Pavlich with it. The Americans killing time and then clear down into the Finland man. 28, 27 seconds remaining in the penalty to Christian. Vila. He's in over the blue line. Vila skating in. Can't split the defense. Johnson takes over and clears it into the Finland man. 15, 14, 13 seconds left in the penalty. 9.17 to play in the game. U.S. 3, Finland 2. Seconds now left in the penalty. The Finns trying to get out of their own end. Leaning in. 3 seconds. 2, 1. The teams are at equal strength. Leaning in. Fans on the shot. Taken by Johnson for the Americans. Still back-to-back -back finish power play. Under nine minutes to play. Lehnen in the center ice. Lehnen in still controlling. Tries to get it up ahead to Villa. Knocked down by the stick of O'Callaghan. Up ahead now to Davy Silk. Silk cross ice passes in it, but it comes back to Ramsey. Ramsey skating in over the blue line, but offside. 8.37 remaining in the third period. Well, we had another good example 
of how good a player Mark Johnson is. He's such an all-around player. He can score goals, kill penalties, but he's so subtle and so smooth in his moves. He's so unusual for somebody his age that it's often easy to overlook his value to this team. But he's really the dominant forward on it. Mark Wells face off to the Americans. Defense control. The USA champ beginning again. Eight and a half minutes to play. The Americans scoring twice in the period. Leading 3-2. Wells over to Strobel. Strobel get over the blue line. His shot deflected wide out in front. Wells strapping for it. Keeps it in the corner. Strobel putting the pressure on Ilaranka there. Sarnin up ahead to Vila. Number 13. Vila to Castellati. Over to Sarnin. Eight minutes and seven seconds to play. And the finish line with 8.05 remaining in the third period. Well, the US, U.S. team now, even though they appear to be in something of a comfortable position with a one-goal lead and a tie putting them uh, possibly into the gold medal, I'm sure at this stage is not thinking anything other than a win. If they're doing anything else than that, they'll fall into too much of a defensive position and make themselves terribly vulnerable to uh, the Finns scoring one or perhaps two. Rotten Aruzio is off the line right now. Craig sweeping it aside. O'Callaghan strapping for it in the corner. Felton and tying him up there. Face off again. That eats up a few more seconds and we have 7.53 remaining in the game. Well, with, e with each whistle, you have about 10,000 people in here putting their eyes up to the clock to see another five seconds go, 10 seconds, 15, but it's all working its way down. Very similar to the situation against the Soviets the other night when Johnson uh, scored the time of game and then Arruzzioni scored at exactly the mark. And the Americans were able to hold off the Soviets over the final 10 minutes. 7.53 remaining in the game. 3-2. The American leading the pin. First it was Jim Craig having a little problem with his strap. Now the U.S. team is finding a small hole in the ice. And again, Basically, to give themselves a little bit more time, a little bit more rest, time for some composure. Broughton, a bit over anxious on the Felton, into the American control. O'Callaghan with a puck, pressured in the corner. Broughton picks it up. Aruzioni, he takes some pressure off by clearing it. And an icing call. So something you don't normally do in a case like this, it eats up a few more seconds anyway, and we have 7.38 remaining. Well, what you're normally trying to do is you want to clear the zone when you're in trouble that way, but you don't want to ice it so that the puck comes back for a phase zone. But when it's doubtful, you're just better to get it out in any way that you can and risk the icing. Brought for the U.S. Pelton in for the Finns on the faceoff. The Finns trying to get it out in front, but it comes to the point. So Arne Emmy shoots it in, and it's blocked in front. And the Americans in center ice now as Kristoff falls down with it. But it's picked up by Broughton, who brings it in over the blue line. Kristoff trapping in the corner. Back to Broughton starts to skate in. Kristoff tried to center it out in front. The Finns were there. Back they come. Kakulina, number 23, has a poke checked away nicely by Baker. Nemo Susi. Dumping it into the corner. Baker back there to get it. Now we have exactly seven minutes remaining in the game. Kristoff to Aruzioni. Aruzioni to Christian again. Christian gets it into the finish end, but taken away there by Timo Susi. Ramsey now back to get it. Ramsey not over his own blue line. But Leitman controls now for Finland. Leibma to Hockelinen, can't control there. To Harrington now, in over the blue line. Harrington losing the puck to Porvari. 6.25 remaining in the game. The U.S. 3, Finland 2. Schneider kept it in. They're onside, the shot, and a stick save by Porvari. Hacks at it, gets it back out to center right. Morrow waiting for the Americans to get back onside. Back to Ramsey. Ramsey along the boards, but taken there by the Finns. At their own blue line, leaning in. Gets the return pass. Six minutes to play in the game now. Hockelinen. Stolen by Pavlich. Pavlich. 
to Morrow. Morrow up ahead to Harrington. Harrington scrapping for it. And tied up there for the faceoff. 5-37. Here's the goal. That's the what, difference in the game right now. Mark Johnson behind the net, controlling the puck. Two finished players. But out in front is Rob McClanahan. Both Clanahan started the Olympics rather slowly. He, he was injured, however. And it's really only the last three games that he's been the kind of player that he has been all season long. Five minutes, 37 seconds. Time remaining. From the faceoff, Davy Silk trying to control it. Silk tied up by Villa. But gets it over into the corner. McClanahan back to Silk. Nobody in front of the net. Now Johnson picks up the loose puck. Johnson trying to get it over to McClanahan. But it comes out to the point, and then McClanahan comes back to center zone with it. 515, 5-14. Christian back to Bill Baker. Baker circling. Up to center ice again. Saarinen to Vila. We have five minutes to play exactly. Vila's weak shot. Christian picking up the loose puck. Davies starting back out of his own end. 4.50 remaining. Silk. McClanahan there for the U.S. The defense trying to bring it back. Back to center up ahead to Koskinen. Koskinen skates by Morrow. Picked up by Johnson. And the pass in front. It was wide as Silk. At center right to McClanahan now. Picked up by Johnson. 4.25 to play. Silk controlling. Up ahead to Bracota. Bracota skating in. Bracota taken out of the play. Johnson is there. Loose puck. And the Finns start back the other way again. But we've got a penalty coming up on the United States. Another penalty U.S. here. Bill Bracota will be going off for two minutes with 4.15 remaining. Whereas the two previous penalties, I think, were uh, good calls. I'm not sure about this one. There's no doubt that Bercota went back at the Finnish player, but it appears it appeared as if he was being held at the time. Whatever it is, the U.S. team has got another two minutes to kill him. Here's the play. Ronnie Amy in there with Bercota. He's got him well wrapped up. Bercota is going to try to get away. Finally hits the, the Finnish player and drawing the penalty. Again, we'll tell you the referee is Vladimir Schubert of Czechoslovakia. The linesmen are from Canada and Holland. Rakota in the box. 4.15 remaining in the game. The United States leading Finland 3-2. They successfully killed back-to-back -back penalties. They'll have to do it again now. And Morrow shooting it into the Finland end. Broughton, Kristoff, Morrow on the ice for the United States, along with Ramsey. And Kristoff trying to come around from the side, then his shot goes through the crease. Back to center right. Morrow has it. 133 left in the penalty. Kristoff and Broughton doing a great job of forechecking, and Kristoff's shot went off the post. Kristoff strapping for it again. Gets it out in front of the American control, keeping it in. Johnson skating in the shot. The we check the score!
watching on the television set on Main Street in the storefront window. They've just seen it. That was a shorthanded goal. Remember, the Americans still have a man in the penalty box for a minute and 12. Scoring shorthanded, 3.24 to go in the game. The U.S. 4, Finn laying in. His slap shot, didn't get all of it. Ramsey tries to clear and does. Back to center ice, 57, 56 seconds left in the penalty, 3.10 to play in the game. Ricotta in the penalty box for the United States. U.S. lining up across the blue line. Three men and then one other person as well. Top of line and at the point. Corbari couldn't get good wood on it. Lehnen in tries to control. In front of the line and his slap shot is blocked in front by McClanahan. See the U.S. team diving after shots. It was McClanahan and he missed it with Ramsey behind him. 24 seconds left in the penalty. Pavlich with a puck. 2.36 to play in the game. Pavlich up ahead. Snyder couldn't control it. Back from the Finns. 15 seconds remaining in the penalty. Poke check at the blue line by Morrow. And they're offside. Offside was the call. 11 seconds now left in the penalty. 2.26 left in the game. There the, there's the U.S. in the shot. Rob McClanahan blocking that one with Ramsey and Morrow behind him. 11 seconds left in the penalty. Dakota will be out of the box then. 2.26 remaining in the game. A lot of wins being exchanged there. Dakota, Johnson, and they're in the position to make them. Kristoff with a puck. Kristoff able to clear it into the Finland zone. Six seconds remaining in the penalty. Leitmo with it. Two seconds. One. Here comes Rakota out of the box. The teams are at equal strength. 2-12 to play. Helton in for Finland with the puck. Back to the American net. Leitmo keeps him in at the point. Susi. Checked by Kristoff. Still controls. Back to Zawar in the inning and a save by Craig. Rakota with the puck. A minute 55 to go in the game. Mountain in, leaving it there, then deciding to cover up. A minute 49 remaining in the game. The goal again by Johnson. Mark Johnson just got the puck as it was crossing the blue line, keeping it on. Watch him ward off the defender. First his backhand, but he stays with it. He goes right to the net and finds the rebound. Finland led two to one, coming into the third period. But it's in Dakota. McClanahan and Johnson scoring for the United States. And now a new chance, one we're so used to. We're number one. A minute 40 remaining in the game. The United States hockey team put together in late August, 61 game schedule. Then on to the Olympics. Trying to go unbeaten, trying to clinch the goal. They're a minute 43 away from it right now. Johnson putting the pressure on. Mark got it out in front, but Suwar and the Emmy is there. Up to Porvari. Porvari taken out of the play, but a loose puck and goal by the Finns. Suwar and the Emmy. A minute 28 to go in the game. The American end. Morrow is there to get it for the U.S. Ramsey passing up along the boards. Up to Sawar and the Emmy at the point. Flat shot blocked in front by Johnson. Then Davy Self takes over. A minute 15 to play. Self back up ice to McClanahan. Robbie into the corner. Leighton is trying to take it away there, but McClanahan controls. Sawar and the Emmy now freezing it along the board. 101. Perfectly content for this time at the moment. Nothing much is happening except the clock is winding down. 61 seconds. You can overdo it as to what this really means, but nobody in their right mind would have believed it. Agreed? This U.S. team, the U.S. has done very well in Olympic competition before. It's not just 60, it's not just 80. There have been other years they've, they've done better than their record prior to the Olympics would have been. Yet these are good players. 45 seconds remaining. Slap shot. Oh, hit the post. And then the other post and the crossbar. Cleared into the corner and then into the seat. With 33 seconds remaining. So the Americans closing with a flourish. 
or to the U.S. lead <laughs> Here's a series of action. The first shot off the post. Goes back to the other side. Post out in front. Now off the crossbar. Battle it back to Arruzzioni. The Americans putting all the pressure on right now. 28 seconds left in the game. Snyder is there. Ties it up. Eats up a few more seconds. There's the time left. 23 seconds remaining. Who were they a week and a half ago? Marlon, and Ramsey, and Baker, and Shelton, and Broughton, and Johnson, and Pavlis, and McCallaghan, and all of them. We know them all now. Oh, a lot more about them in the coming months and the coming years, I'm sure. 23 seconds remaining in the game. The United States leading Finland 4-2. Christian, it comes out over the blue line. Skating back with it. Filling some time now. Baker. 13 seconds. Pavlik gets there. They wave off the icing. Eight seconds for the gold medal. And the whistle here stopping the clock at seven. Seven seconds for making in the game. These kids apparently haven't been there before, and yet they've been there all along. They're used to the challenges of of hockey in high school and college. They've been the achievers. They're the ones who've been on the All-Star team, the All-Americans winning the NCAA titles. And this is just another one. Certainly the toughest, but they made it. The crowd going insane at the moment. Bedlam in here, stomping. Seconds to the gold medal. Four to the gold medal. This impossible dream comes true. The deal There's will Jim, not subside. There's Jim Craig looking for his father in the stand.
gold medal winner Shirley Babishoff. In the pool or out, performance and comfort just plain go together. That's why my 100% cotton. High performance Martex Luxor towels. Super absorbent, super soft, super comfortable. Because they're cotton. Natural 100% cotton. Comfort and performance. They just plain go together. Comfortable, washable, durable, fashionable. Look for the seal of cotton. Cotton performs. When we say all kinds of people should get together with their credit union, here's what we mean. Money, it's really tough these days. When you get it, you spend it. But that's where the credit union can help, with sensible savings plans. You can save at your credit union and still get a high return. And it's safe, right? You bet it is. People should get together with We're back live at the Olympic Center. The United States hockey team, so many in the crowd have remained. The exhilaration. Frank Gifford is there. Bobby Addy, we finally got them down off the mountain. And Ann Arledge. Looking on as about, I guess, 10,000 people in the arena. And so many out on Main Street. And so many across the country, obviously, today. Witnessing is the United States defeats Finland, wins the gold medal, the final score, 4-2. to two. And as we take a look outside near the high school, we'll check. Okay, now you're looking at the scene outside in front of the high school. I've been trying to think here. I've been covering sports since 1948 on television. It's almost 32 years, and this is it. This is the greatest moment I have ever seen, the most emotion, the most excitement, the greatest achievement on the part of a single group of young men. The bands are playing. They're going to be, look at the snow uh, being blown around. It's, it's, it's a scene that I think all of us will literally remember for the rest of our lives when the kids from the colleges of the United States beat first the greatest team in the world and then got up early one Sunday morning in the Adirondack State Park and won the gold medal. It's a greater achievement than, as I say, anything I can think of that I have ever seen in the field of sport. It isn't over yet. Remember, Jim, in the locker room waiting for them. Uh, that'll be a live thing when you see that. This afternoon, the Soviets and the Swedes will be playing for the silver medal. It's all over. As far as the gold is concerned, the United States has won it. Rune Arledge, who's in here at the whole games, will really be shocked at this. I can't think of another thing to say. Yay! Back to you, Al. <laughs> you share the emotions, the feelings of untold millions right now. And Ken Dryden, your thoughts. It's all over right now. The United States accomplishing what was seemingly impossible. Yes, they did. And it's, it's just very hard to, uh, to express anything. I mean, you start and you kind of shake your head and smile and uh, nothing seems to come. It's just a, an amazing performance. Uh, but, it's, but when you're an underdog the way the U.S. team is, and when you're a talented team, you just feed on the excitement that you create in every subsequent game. It builds and you get better, and it gets build, it builds and you get better, and it goes out of control, and you finally win. It's just amazing. Now. Again, we have Jim Lampley in the locker room. who will talk to the players. who will talk to Herb Brooks. We'll be back right after this match. Mr. Olympia for Vitalis. Franco Colombo, what's a bodybuilder doing Vitalis commercials for? I want my hair to look as good as my body. Gee, that good? Sure, it's easy. All a man has to do is massage in a few drops of this after his shampoos and showers. To make his hair soft, healthy looking, and easy to control. Especially if you blow dry. Franco, can I touch you? Only the hair. Metropolitan really stands by you. One, two, three. Glad I'm insured by Metropolitan, because Metropolitan will really stand by me. Metropolitan really stood by me. So now I have the dream house I always dreamed of. Two daughters. Fighting. Metropolitan really stood by me. For insurance for life, home, car, health and retirement. Metropolitan really stands by you. 
live shot on Main Street. I imagine that is a scene that uh, is probably being repeated in several spots around the country right now. As the United States hockey team go to the tournament unbeaten. It all started. You got you have to go back to Bill Baker's goal against Sweden when things looked desperate. 27 seconds remaining to get the tie. The win over Czechoslovakia. We're going to go back and show you now the winning goal. This made it 3-2. Rob McClanahan scoring at 6.05 of the third period. Well, it's, it's rather appropriate that two very important people had a, had a large part in this goal. First, Dave Christian making the play into the corner to Mark Johnson. And watch Mark Johnson as he did all Olympics. Not but he just stays with the puck. He has hockey sense. He knows what he's doing. He finds McClanahan out in front. And Belton makes the mistake of going down, opening his legs, and McClanahan makes no mistake. And the United States in the third period killing those two back-to-back -back penalties, then the other penalty coming late in the game and shorthanded. Mark Johnson able to score from Steve Kristoff at 16.25 of the third period. The has not yet reached the locker room. I can imagine there is a, a mob scene not to be believed in the corridor. And it's quite a distance to the locker room. And as I say, we will be going there as soon as the team arrives. Main Street. Well, I'm sure Main Street will be even more crowded in a few moments. As most of the people are now filing out of this building. There's still a lot sitting in their seats, and I think most of them just a little stunned. They're all shaking their heads, too, but uh, smiling as well. Well, you, you wish at this point you could just sit and reflect and and write something about this game. Uh, as Jim McKay said, uh, <laughs> more to say. we all have to just sit back and, and, and relish the moment, I suppose, and, and reflect back on it, think back upon it, as we'll do for a long, long time. Stunning and, and overwhelming, and, and there are no adjectives to, to describe it, none at all. All right, the team still has not arrived back in the locker room, if you can believe it. And we'll be coming back to the Olympic Center in just a moment, right after this word. If you missed the recent Delco battery sale, here's great news. AC Delco slashes regular prices on the three most powerful automotive Delco Freedom batteries. Freedom is the original, never-add-water, maintenance-free battery. It's powerful, dependable, and it's from Delco. Check Delco Freedom battery prices where quality AC Delco parts are sold. Then take advantage of our reduced regular price. You'll say thanks, Delco. Some guys never learn. They're still taking it on the chin. Gotcha. Norelco offers the Norelco Rotary Razor. Not one or two blades, six blades. Inside, three adjustable floating heads. And a unique shaving angle for a very close shave without a nick or cut. So, say hello to the Norelco Rotary Razor. And say goodbye to Gotcha. We're back again, and we're just going to let pictures tell the story, because... There are very few words to express uh, the feelings, I'm sure, of, of many, many people. Main Street again. There's no posturing out there. Those are just people that are happy. That's outside the arena. It was, uh, I don't have to tell you, very difficult to get in here today. The tickets... Uh, more than $50 for the top seats, and anybody who had one and wanted to quadruple that figure had no problem. Lake Placid, awakening this morning. Everybody had breakfast, came out to the arena early, an improbable time for the hockey game to start, 11 o'clock, and again, you go back to that same situation in Squaw Valley, the win over the Soviets, everybody remembering that, and... Not too many people remembering that the next morning the U.S. had to come back to actually clinch the gold medal against Czechoslovakia, and they trailed at the end of the second period. Jack Riley was the head coach of that 1960 team. And so parallels with Roger and 
Billy Christian on that 1960 team. And Davey Christian, number 23 on this one. Jim Lampley is down in the dressing room. The U.S. team is finally arriving in their home quarters. And we'll be going down there momentarily. Right now, let's go to Jim Lampley. I'm here in a locker room next to the ice with Vice President Walter myself, poetically enough, a Minnesotan like so many members of the team. The captain, Mike Caruzioni, who, of course, scored the winning goal Friday night against the Soviet Union. A bigger thrill today, Mike? Oh, no question. No question, because we don't win today. Uh, then that goal against the Soviets, just another goal and uh, just a part of a win. But uh, right now, it was just uh, 20 guys of that I'm so proud of, and just to go in there and be a part of that team, it's just sensational. 20 of you who have a great deal to be proud of, many of them pouring into the room now. Mr. Vice President, congratulations, Coach Brooks. Coach Herb Brooks, right here between us. A tremendous effort. You had to be very proud of your team when they had three penalties in the last 12 minutes, overcame them all, and even got the shorthanded goal to clinch it. Well, sometimes we have not made, uh, made the job uh, as easy as we would like. Uh, but I think that when we had those penalties, you could just feel the, uh, the determination build up. And we were going to get it done somehow that we were going to take that guy to the penalty box and he wouldn't burn us. So I think we get stronger because of those penalties, strange as it may seem. It, just, it was a, a catalyst that uh, maybe we needed. Mr. Vice President, I'm sure you could tell by being here today and if you were exposed to the game on Friday night, a tremendous feeling to be in this arena during the time this hockey team has been playing. To watch on television is fantastic, but to be here is unbelievable. This is one of the greatest moments uh, I've ever been through in my whole life. I think I have President Carter like to say hello to you. <laughs> Mr. President, we've really got a fantastic hockey team here. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. The, the, the coach, Herb, is right here with us Very right fine. now. Thank you. Yes, sir. Herb, you told me last night you had one more to win, and you really came <laughs> But, Mr. President, I lie a lot, and I didn't think... <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know if we were going to do it. But it, it was a great win, uh, you know, for everybody in sport and, and the American people in general because of the, you know, things we had to overcome from uh, different beliefs, ways of life, uh, whatever. And I think it just proves that uh, uh, our way of life is the, is, the, is the proper way to continue on. Well, I, I just want to let you know again that everybody in our country is proud, was watching it. We were trying to do business, but nobody could do it because we were watching the TV with one eye and working on... You ran in economics for the other. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that the, the latter of the two are, are far more important. Uh, the athletics are important, but uh, problems are, 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 are more so. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. I look forward to it. You wouldn't accept my invitation last night until you won the gold medal. We're looking forward to tomorrow. Amy was there this afternoon also. Yeah, I understand. And, um, we'll be seeing you tomorrow and tell the whole team that we're extremely proud of them. They've uh, come through like true champions. And I think all of your opponents uh, did a fine job, too, but uh, we are so proud of you. Can I speak to the captain just a minute? Yes, uh, one moment, sir. All right, Mike. Hello, Mr. President. Tell all the much I love them, and we'll see you tomorrow at the White House, and we're all proud of you. Thank you very much. We'll all be there. Good luck to you. Okay, good luck to you. We'll celebrate. <laughs> oh, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, congratulations from President Carter. Coach Brooks, I think that you and your team have had the kind of experience that brings a lot of us much closer together. Well, I guess, you know, uh, a lot of times the good wor Lord works in strange ways, and uh, uh, this is uh, something that will, will grow as, as years go on. What about the man to your left, or to your right here, Jim Craig? Jim, any ants out there today? Step out here so we can see you. <laughs> all the time we were losing. <laughs> we're all anxious. Every shot on goal near the end, but... Uh, these guys, they just, you got to spot them a goal to get them going, I guess, and they just, just unbelievable. Every third period, they just get better and better, and uh, I just hope that if I did anything to keep them going, I get them, have confidence that they, I have so much confidence in them, and uh, 20, 20 guys, geez, they're just unbelievable, and it's a team that won it, and uh, every single one of them, I just love them all, and coaching staff, and yeah, you, Eric, I love you, too. <laughs> Everybody. A lot, time, a lot of the time, you had the best seat in the house to watch them play. You tonight, you felt they had have no trouble getting back up for this game. Did you have any worries about that in the first period? Well, I think they were uh, just a little uh, nervous on what was going on. I think, uh, in the, you know, when you have 60 minutes to play, maybe they have, uh, you know, 40 minutes where they can think, as long as they're not down by too much or up by too much. So uh, when it came down to the last period, they had nothing to think about but got to go out and win the period. And if they didn't, you know, everybody would come back in the locker room just thinking uh, if we didn't give it our best goal for the last time, we'd be really in trouble. So they, they just played their hearts out. And, 
we got to wear that gold. The price of gold keeps going up. Remember that. You get to wear it too, Jimmy. Where is Mark Johnson? Is Mark Johnson near us? There he is. Mark Johnson, come on in. Two assists. The assist that set up the tie-breaking goal and then the shorthanded goal. You seem to get a lot of ice time all the way through this experience. As you know, it's a uh, team effort, and uh, everyone worked really hard. And, uh, you know, one player doesn't make a team. It took 20 of us, and we really pulled together tonight. And uh, I just can't believe the effort that we put in the third period and all the third periods of the tournament. And uh, I just couldn't be a happier guy for all 20 guys right here. We just did a hell of an effort. I wonder what the feeling was in the dressing room between the second and third periods. You trailed two to one, and as you had so many times in these Olympics, you would have to come back again. I think that was, you know, our team style, you know, we just, uh, when we needed to, we sucked it up, we worked hard, and uh, I think everyone was confident and very positive that uh, if we worked hard, things would go our way, and uh, it ended up 4-2 uh, to us, and uh, we're just happy. Congratulations, Mark. Great hockey. Where is Rob McClanahan? Man who scored the tie-breaking goal. Congratulations. A great effort. Thank you very much. That's great. Did you see the, uh, the puck coming out in front of the net to you on that tie-breaking goal? Oh, yeah. I, uh, Mark was just sitting behind, and I was just sitting uh, right off to the side. And uh, we looked, I think we looked at each other for a couple seconds, maybe not that long, but it seemed like that. And he threw it out there, and I just hung on to it, and the goalie slid across, and I threw it right between his legs. At that time, less than 15 minutes to go in the game, did you feel like the team was starting to get anxious, or were you still skating within yourself? Well, uh, we told ourselves after the second period that all, all through the year, and especially in this tournament, at the third period, it's been our best period. Uh, we proved that against the Russians. We proved that against every team we played. And I think when we kept that in mind, we played our best hockey in the third period again. Okay, congratulations again. Let me have one last word here. With the captain of this team, Mike Arruzzioni, who came from the International Hockey League, Toledo, to come to this experience, could you have ever dreamed six or eight months ago that you'd be standing here in this position? No, I don't think so, uh, especially not with the gold medal. I think six months ago we really had a feeling that we would have a shot at a medal, but uh, the gold medal, as I said, six months ago, it's a dream, but one game against the Russians and one game against the Finns, uh, we played with so much pride that, uh, I don't know, it's just indescribable, the sensation. Six ago you lost to the Soviets in the Garden 10-3. to When did you first start beginning to think realistically about a gold medal here? When we beat them, really. When we had the opportunity. We knew the, the game against the Soviet Union in Madison Square Garden was our 60th game. And it was just to us another game. It was a 2 o'clock game. We flew down. Uh, nobody was really into playing except you know, the idea of in the Russians, the Soviet team, to be able to play them. When it came down to the, after we beat the Czechs and we were in the final four, we said, hey, we can win a gold medal. I mean, we just have to beat the Soviet Union and we have to beat Finland and we're going to win a gold medal. And we did. You shared a remarkable experience with the crowd in this arena. Great. I mean, they were behind us. Uh, we, we were looking forward to that. We were hoping they'd be here, and it was, uh, it was great. Mike, our congratulations to you, your 19 teammates, Coach Brooks, everyone who shared in this. Now back to you, Jim McKay. Well, they're a great bunch of kids, and so many personal stories. David Christian, whose father scored the winning goal 20 years ago against the Soviet Union. Mark Johnson, whose father coached the team four years ago. Herb Brooks, the coach who was cut, the last man cut 20 years ago. Craig, if you saw the up close and personal the other night, you saw him say that the greatest man he's ever known is his father. And I'm sure you could read his lips as I could. After the game today, when he looked up to the stands, the first thing he said was, where's my father? He's there. So are we all. We're back at 2.30 for the silver medal game. That's what the Soviet Union and Sweden will be playing for. It should be a good hockey game. Up superstars, and let's see what we have later today. Oh, kinds of things. We have the exhibition figure skating, which is really marvelous coming up tonight there's the hockey sweden against the soviet union 230 for the silver medal abc's wide world of sports what do we have today rune five o'clock well it's wide world of sports and seven o'clock we come back with the figure skating exhibition and after that the closing well highlights of everything and then the closing ceremony which should be most interesting and stay with us till the very very end of the greatest olympics i think we've ever televised I'm Jim McKay. The 13th Winter Olympic Games. 
have been brought to you by Inglenook, America's superior wine for those moments in life that are just a little special. Remember Inglenook when the toast is from your heart. And by AC Delco Division of General Motors. Ask for reliable, long-life AC Delco automotive products wherever you go for parts or service. For improved economy and performance, go with the names you know, AC Delco. has been a presentation of ABC Sports as around the world as the leader in sports television. The price won't stop you. The puck in the Finland end and now back to center ice where Bill Baker controls for the United States then loses it at the blue line. Up ahead to Susie on the left side. Susie can't play the carom pass. Christian there with him. Wells who has lost his helmet starts to skate out of his own end. Up ahead to Eric Strobel. Strobel then loses at center ice to Makikolo, taken away there by Baker. Baker in over the blue line. Shot in around the board, back of the net. Saarinen losing it there. Johnson with it, comes back to Christian at the point. Davy getting out in front, backhands it, swept aside in front. Johnson.